marker. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, and welcome everybody. This is Final Fantasy V Randomizer Career Day. Basically, we are giving an airship at the very beginning of the run, and then we just visit various places. All, almost everything has been randomized in terms of chest contents and item stuff. Um, basically, the goal is to find the four tablets in order to be able to enter the void and defeat the final boss. The way we find four tablets is by defeating bosses. Defeating bosses gives us various rewards that can range from pretty amazing items and also the tablets are also key items that unlock other stuff to basically kind of pointless. Either way, this is going to be a bit of a special one because I just figured why not try to do a bit more. Like for example, on this solo character and only the first four jobs I find. Which means I'm going to just the first four jobs I find. By the way, it does include in case I find a job in a shop, then I will have to run with that one, and that will be the one. No, the game is not fixed, but not the title. Let me tell you, I can send you a screenshot of the thing, and it is fixed. On my end. You may have to refresh, I guess. Either way, I would say let's get this going. And. 3, 2, 1, let's move. I don't really know this randomizer too well yet, but I just figured this might be fun. Hey, Rim, welcome to you as well. I hope you have a nice day so far. Or a good night. Might be night time for a bunch of people. So, yeah, alrighty, what do we start with as the job? I actually need to get my. Stream controls. Where are my stream controls? Okay, we start with thieves. That's gonna be an interesting one. The thieves are pretty awesome one place or another in Watch of Fiesta. I'm not so sure about this one. Uh, thieves. That's not what I was looking for. Um, suddenly, the thing has an outline. I'm not sure why this has an outline now. I'm trying to... Hmm, this will be options. There we go. Weird that it didn't do that. And... Somewhere... Ah, oh, there it is. I actually already had it open. So, the first job we have is a thief. And guys, who do we choose or pick? We can actually pick any of the characters we want, and that will be that. As usual, we just check the castle here first, that we are just in here. And we have a double dash, which means even without thieves, we would be able to dash really quickly. Actually twice as fast as you can normally dash, I believe. So let's see, we get mythical stuff, shurikens, which we could throw, vampire blue magic. 10,000 gil. So, as long as somebody says something in chat about which character we should choose, Butts, Lena, Galef, Kara, or... Well, Ferris. I'll just pick that character, probably. 10,000 gil, nice. So, I hear a Ferris from my left side, so... Unless somebody has objections, we will potentially just run with that. Richter Shade says Butts. Lethen says Ferris, alrighty. The greetings to you, Gump. God Empress Lurakos the Fifth. Welcome. It's going quite well. Thank you. How are you doing? Magic sword ability, double lance, frog song blue magic. I actually haven't decided yet whether I'm allowed to use additional abilities. Hmm. Frog song magic. Actually, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Because I can just technically use the abilities I get from other classes by getting abilities rather than getting their jobs. Hmm. I didn't think about this. Kodachi, Ether, Phoenix Down, and the Region Time Magic. You doing pretty well yourself? Alrighty, glad to hear that. The other pink haired one. Right. Mimic Crystal. Alrighty, we have as a second job a Mimic. That's not a good start. <laughs> uh. 
Oh, this is not the correct mode. I can't even select Mimic here. Because Mimic is not normally part of the thing. I'm using the Photo Fiesta tool. And I may have to choose a different background right now. Hang on. Hang on. Fiesta modes. Forbidden. No, not forbidden. Fiesta modes. Pure chaos. There's mime. Alrighty. We have mime as a second class, I guess. And blue magic. Mime is interesting, I guess. But thief and mime just doesn't mesh well together. All done moving? Yeah, thankfully. And for the ornament, thank you so much for the host. I appreciate that. Welcome, everybody. I hope you're doing well. I think I should actually land in the back spot in order to get through this cave a little bit faster. Silk robe. At least a mimic can equip rollouts in case we manage to find them viable somewhere. So I think I saw the most people vote for specifically fairies. So I'm probably just gonna roll them fairies. What did I get? I actually did not pay attention. And this guy gives me a Gimman Bell. I actually did not know this guy even gives you anything until like a few minutes ago when I was reading through the FAQ. Ether, Antidote, and Revivify. Chain Rip from Sildra. Alright, I thank you. Appreciate that. So what do you guys think? Should I be allowed to use abilities from other classes or should I just stick to the class or the jobs I get. I hear anything I get from my left side. Maybe I could kind of do a halfway thing where I'm using anything I get, but only but without buying them from shops. Like I wouldn't be able to buy guildhouses from shops, but if I find guildhouses in a thing, I would be using it. Something like that. All right, what do we have? A rising sun guardian dagger. I really like guardian daggers. I'm gonna buy one. Flail, Ether, Flame... Okay, Revivifies are here. There's Turtle Shells, Ethers, Flame Scrolls, in case we get something with the Ninja. Anything you find is okay, just don't, just can't buy. Alrighty, thank you. How does one mime himself, themselves? Actually, that's kind of interesting. You do replicate whatever you have done before. So, Chocobo, a power song, Ragnarok Blade is actually pretty crazy. Eva Esper and Mimic Ability, well that's not gonna be useful. Uh, it's actually surprisingly useful to be able to mimic yourself, because if you, let's say, use a Thunder Rod in order to break it, you can use a Thunder Rod again without actually using up the resources. Or Elixirs or stuff. Maiden's Kiss, um, Light Stuff, can a mime use staves? I believe the mime can use staves, so... Also, mime can use double hands, which is interesting. Hey, uh, yeah, I can use the light stuff. I can buy a bunch of light staves and use that. Antidote, eye drops, two times eye drops in here. I can also use shields in... as a mime, which is interesting. Uh... I'm gonna just buy like five light staves and break them over boss's heads in order to get a bunch of experience and also money. Well, mainly experience, I guess. So we get arrow, exit, and psych. We don't have any in here. Ramu, Esper Magic, Power Drink. Also, maybe I should check the abilities we got. We have Fight, Magic Sword to level 2. And Mimic. Oh, I haven't even selected anything. I definitely need item for our mime here. We also get Mimic as our main ability. And I guess I can use Magic Sword since that's not disallowed. But at the same time, Double Lands cannot be magically enchanted. Black level 1. <laughs> Monster in a box. So the... Goblin had to be somewhere, and before we do anything... 
I need to make sure that this is indeed a Zorg hacked challenge. Oh. <laughs> I mimicked them hitting themselves. <laughs> nice. Because the fight command is not up on a mime, makes it really weird. You could X match a double flare, then make yourself an extra round of the cast without MP. I guess so, that's true. We learned Goblin Punch. Did we get an Aegis shield? Hey, that's nice. Mime can use shields, which is one of the weird things about it. I'm gonna equip the Light Rod. That's that. Alright. Ferris is now our leader. Like so many times before. Okay, so that's the last shop we can check. Uh, Coronet is actually really interesting. Not really. Potion Soft. Can buy a bunch of stuffs in case people get petrified. Although I guess that doesn't really matter. A few potions to just heal up and that's that. Okay. A mime, I believe, does passively get the abilities of other classes, so I should probably get ability points with my thief sometime. And since we do have a double lance, this might be reasonable, depending on what enemy or boss we are facing here. Oh, by the way, by default, encounters are off. I'm going to set this to 4, which means I think I should get multipliers. I don't actually really know. Set the battle speed to the slowest, and also window command to short, so I have... The proper thing to press classes gives us immunity to getting blinded. When you get a minute, I sent you a thing you could use as the career deck command on Discord if you'd like. Oh, I appreciate that. I do have a moment. Very nice. Thank you so much, Lethe. I'm gonna update this right now. Career deck command. If I find it, anyways. Alrighty, exclamation mark career day for the updated thing now. Thank you very much. Mediator crystal. Alrighty, we have a mediator, which is called the Beastmaster as well. So we have Beastmaster, which actually is interesting because we do, as a matter of fact, have. Um, the ability to do a very cheeky way of leveling now. And Lamia's Tiara is pretty nice as well. Because we have a headgear equipment. Lamia's Tiara gives you 3 magic power, which is pretty good. Okay defense, it is a relatively weak item for late game in terms of defense. But it gives you immunity to getting confused, which is kind of huge. I have to admit I didn't read it. I just trust you. <laughs> Alrighty, what do we have here? We get four crystals. Oh, that's awkward. I might just get killed here. But those things are fast, but they shouldn't have much HP. Uh, magic sword? We have no magic sword at all. So, the reason why this is super awkward is because... I kind of really don't want to break four light staves for this specifically. I might be able to just kill them before they kill me. Maybe. Uh, the front crystal seems to deal the most damage physically, or it might just be... Oh. <laughs> I mimicked myself moving row, so I'm now in the back row again. <laughs> this is so awkward when your up command is not the one you expect it to be, because fight is not up. So I need to heal. So, the tr uh, tricky thing about the crystals normally is that if you push them below a certain HP threshold, they will go crazy with their powerful magical abilities. But I don't know whether they even have enough HP to survive an attack. They probably do. I'm just gonna test it. I already saved, I guess. 62. Alright, I figured that would happen. So we just killed them in one shot. 
It's apparently a wall, as most things you write. I... I absolutely know that too. I do that as well. So in career day, normally bosses don't give you any experience or ability points. However, in career day, they do. So in theory, you never really have to do any random battles if you don't want to. But it might be worthwhile to just power level a little bit anyways in order to get off the ground in certain cases. And that's kind of what I plan on doing. We did get Beastmaster, which means we have the ability to just defeat shield dragons if we get lucky, that is. Need to get re relatively lucky in order to do that, though, because Beastmasters are not the fastest characters. Alright, we get some Soot, we get the Mazamune, and also I need to update the tracker. We just defeated whatever was in this guy's spot. Get a Flail. We can actually use Flails as a mime, which is interesting. So, alrighty, and we get our rewards from the Wind Shrine. Ifrit, Esper Magic, Ribbon, Bolt Sword Magic, and Geomancer Crystal. Alrighty, <laughs> we have our jobs already in lockdown, so it's gonna be a Geomancer next. Which, Geomancer is actually not too terrible. Early game. But oh boy, this is gonna... This is going to be interesting, huh? This is gonna be really interesting. Oh well. So we are level 5 right now. Um, I'm not sure what to think of getting <laughs> GMN, so we don't have any really powerful claws at all, really. What I'm gonna do is I'll just go through here and see what enemies in Carbos spot. Carbos has 650 HP, so let's see what we have here. The Hero Plant. Oh, without having any form of area of effect, this is probably not going to go particularly well. I'm just going to try and use a light stuff. Unfortunately, it's only single target. It should one-shot the plant, but I might run into the trouble that the little flowers will just confuse and kill me. And just, well, defeat me without me being able to do anything about it. Yeah, that's confusion. Oh, wait, we are immune against confusion. I... Empty. Oh, okay, I could not... Um, I guess I... Hmm. Oh, I didn't... F I don't have the thing I put anymore. Alright, actually, I just killed myself there. That was my own mistake, really. Because I forgot to equip the thing again, because when you break a stuff... Also, Empty, I think, was probably because there was no targets? I'm actually not sure. Either way, I'm just gonna leave this for now. And get more items from this area here. Get three items first, 5,000 gold. Ramu. Right, we have Ramu as a summon now. Ice Rod. Ice Rod is nice because we can just deal a ton of, well, ice based damage to one enemy. Actually, I think it's all enemies. Ice Black Magic. So the way certain spells work, like ice and such, is that when I find them in the overworld as items in chests and such, it will be the baseline spell level ice, uh, ice 1. If I find another ice, it will be ice 2 and then ice 3 afterwards. It will just kind of upgrade itself. Roulette and ice 3. So I can just straight up buy ice 3, but I can't use it anyways because that's not the jobs we have. We have those four jobs and that's gonna be whatever it is. As a matter of fact, I'm going to switch over to my Mediator with Black Level 1 ability, which may or may not be useful. Just so I start learning control, because I will want to control enemies in order to continue. Is a Dragoon. Unfortunately, we don't get a Dragoon. I also don't get to buy abilities, as we established. I can find them and use them, but I don't get to buy ab abilities. I assume it would be fine to buy abilities of classes that I already have, though. So I will run with that idea. So healing stuff, we can use as a mine. Whip, we already have. Copper pelt, I guess this tag is slightly better. Alright, nothing too terribly interesting in here. I'll probably just see whether I get any particularly interesting items. Other than that, I might just run a few battles to try and gain a few levels. 
not entirely sure when I should start trying to do that. Okay, first things first, we just check all the shops again. But it's the exact same shop. I probably could memorize this having the same shop as the previous town that I just visited. Carbuncle, Cure... Uh, we don't get to use those spells anyways. And <laughs> I can do, thank you. I hope you're doing well. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Black Mage would be here, if only we went here first, I guess. Hey Zoltana, welcome, how are you doing? You watched my race earlier. Sorry, it wasn't any closer, but sometimes you just make the wrong uh, decisions on every corner. And that's just how random eraser works sometimes. And that's okay. To be honest, I'm not too ba sad about being out of that tournament. Mainly because I realized I just really don't like hard mode. <laughs> I like doing wacky and silly stuff, but hard mode kind of makes it so you get rather punished in case you are not reasonably consistent with execution. Remora, 18,000 gil, and more money. Defend the sword, cursed shield, preemptive ability. Preemptive ability sounds actually quite nice. Well, not really, because I don't really get into random encounters. Another Lamia's Tiara. Well, if we have two now. Which means we could sell one for about, I think, 2800 gold. Not too bad. Alright. So, I would like to grind a little bit. The question is where I do this the most efficiently. Because I don't really know what I should go for. Um, I'm just gonna go North Mountain for now. And I might just turn on the encounters here. Let's turn on encounters and just fight them, I guess. We can stand in the back row as a... Best encounters, there we go. We can stand in the back row as a Beastmaster with the whip having reach. But that's kinda nice. A hundred gil. Not the greatest. That's a lot of enemies. We do have black. Magic. Wow, those things just don't take any damage from that, huh? No, you! No, you! Okay. This is probably too many enemies at once for me to do anything about that, so I'm just gonna run away. Still have a few potions to use. Worst case scenario, I'm just gonna turn into Mime and light stuff something. Okay, this should be a lot more reasonable if we hit. We may want to wait until we get a better weapon for Ferris, as at least a Beastmaster, if nothing else. To be fair, this weapon does a lot of damage. I think it was a chainmate, wasn't it, from Sildra's spot? Oh, and we get experience. 230 experience. We get two levels from that. So, experience is multiplied, and I think ability points too. I'm really glad I, we hit that Gala Cat, because Gala Cats have a bit of evasion, so it's not guaranteed that they hit it. And as we've seen earlier, it's not even guaranteed hitting those guys, because the whip has just like a 10% chance to miss, I think? Something along those lines. So, we have leveled up a little bit. I think Control is like the second ability of a Mediator. Red level 1. That's actually more or less strictly better than black level one, except that you don't get as much magic power. But you can use both uh, black and also white magic from level one, which armor might be really nice. As long as you don't die, exactly. We get the chop level. I believe we learn tame first, which basically stop for enemies, which doesn't really help us for the most part. Let's get another level. 
There's no more chests around here. At this point, it's just going for the boss. You know what? I'm going to disable encounters now. Just run up to the boss. Uh, because we should be strong enough to take on the boss in theory. Unless it's just a monster that we can't really deal with well. I could also consider using Geomancer in this area. Which I think has a rather favorable ability. So let's see, what do we get? And we get Archeo Avis in this spot. It's 25% of our max health and damage. Let me think about this. Archeo Avis is interesting. Because it has five different forms. Each individual form probably does not have too much HP. Um, it starts with rather high physical defense. But relatively low magic defense. But I feel like the chain whip is probably strong enough that it doesn't really matter. So I should just attack him instead. Yeah, I should just attack. And unfortunately he is just a little bit too fast for me. So he's in his third form already. Yeah, he's just very, very slightly too fast. This is awkward. You wish you could whip a flying cat IRL? That's weird. How would you do that? Okay, I'm getting out of here for now. You know this is Arceo Avis, which is really not too bad. But I feel like what I really need to do is just... ...get some... ...levels or some items or something from somewhere. So... Hmm. Levels is probably my best bet. So I want to just kind of kill something that gives me a lot of experience, preferably. So I'm just kind of thinking about how we could uh, accomplish that. Probably it's just as a mime and breaking some light staves. So again, we cannot use uh, buy abilities of stuff that we don't already have. Running shoes! Well, there's something amazing right there. Um, do I have enough stuff to sell to buy the running shoes? I think so. But the thing is, if I ever get the ability to equip swords, like the literal ability to equip swords, and I could use those. I'm not gonna use a curse shield. Mazamune. Uh, keep the Aegis shield. Sell one tiara. Actually, a lot less expensive than I than as figured it would be. Kodachi. I have to sell the Tempest for the Ragnarok. You know. Uh, let's sell the Tempest. Yeah, and we buy the running shoes because being able to run like the wind is just crazy. Did I not buy the Greenberry? Okay. Here, running shoes. That's pretty ridiculous, actually. Why would I do that? I mean, they were attacking me in this case, so I decided to defend myself. Dark armor. I will want to buy that, that is a relatively late game uh, armor item, so sounds like a good investment to me. Just need a little bit more money. Not even much. Selling the Phoenix down, and the Aether. I don't have any character that uses MP at all, so selling the Aethers is probably a reasonable choice. Okay. Dark armor is basically the end game armor for um, cactus with medium stuff. Sleep blade. Okay, now we're talking because with sleep blade, again, I'm only allowed to use abilities that I already have or find. Sleep blade allows me to just put enemies to sleep, which is really good. Okay, we can use a heart or Halcon dagger. Ethan the elixirs are here. Crystal armor. Okay, there's flame th things and water things in case we get the throw ability. And also pinwheels for that matter. So, you can't magic sword whips. It doesn't work. But what you can magic sword is daggers. So, we would be using sleep with a dagger in case that would be a reasonable solution. Let's actually think about this. Is there any random enemy that we could just defeat with sleep. 
can't really think of anything right now. Okay, here. This is Titan Spot. This has 2600 HP. So what I'm gonna do here real quick is I'm just gonna take a mime and use items. A preemptive in case it is Biblos or Ifrit for some reason they can be preemptive. And attack. And Guardian Dagger. So, what I want to do is I want to just uh, defeat this boss, whatever it is, in order to get a bunch of experience. That's kind of my idea of how to get experience right now. How the world that will work, I have no idea. Let's see, Golem Spot has 2600 HP. And it is Galora. Um, we can definitely put Galora to sleep. But again, I'm just gonna break some light staves. 2600. Uh, this is not gonna work out. He has too much attack power, I think. Yeah, alright. Does not quite work. And I don't deal quite enough damage. I can one-shot... Well, RKA is you can never one-shot, actually, which is awkward. Um... What else did we have here? That was the plant, which is also another one shot because that's how it is. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get the magic sword ability here. Or a guardian dagger. Because potentially I can just put an enemy to sleep. I think you can put Galura to sleep, so I may want to return there soon. He also does give us a high potions. He wants to defeat him. Also, I don't know why they just decide to walk straight up through the closed door, but it works, I guess. Alright, this is interesting. This guy might just do nothing in the first turn, so let's just do this. So Apocalypse has probably like 6000 HP in this spot. Oh boy, he has a lot of magic defense. Dark Shock would half our level, but we're still fine for now. Not like halving our level is going to have that much of an impact. It will probably deal a little bit less damage, but... Oh, only 2000. So normally this is Puroboros, which have 1500 HP each, and that's a 9000 HP total. And apparently the boss does not get too much. Alrighty, and we get the steamship key from this spot. That's nice. Yeah, we defeat the Puroboros in this spot here, and we get the Steamship Key. And we also got a ton of levels thanks to this. We are level 18 now. So a lot better setup for just killing stuff through sheer brute force. So I'm going to go back to my Mediator. Running Shoes and Chain. You know what? With the Running Shoes... I can probably just go ahead and... Defeat the Archeo Avis up here without any trouble, I would say. I'm just gonna do this real quick. Since with Running Shoes, I'm just, well, strictly outrunning the enemy. Keep in mind, Running Shoes don't just give haste, which is rather broken in Final Fantasy V. Like, haste is ridiculously insanely good, and so is slow, depending on the, well, Either you are affected or the enemy. It's really horrible or really amazing. Either way. Kind of trying to think of stuff that I may want to catch. Maybe I would want to catch like a bear or sand bear in order to use Baraga. But not necessarily, I guess. So. Once again, I'm just hitting RQ Avis. So RQ Avis works as follows. Uh, he has four different forms in which he switches between silently. Whenever you see at the bottom right, the ATB stops a little bit after Ferris goes back into position, and that means we actually just kind of churn through all the forms. Because this spot only has about 850 plus 600 HP uh, for Magiza and Forza, effectively RKV is this, uh, just kind of distributes that amount of HP between all four forms. Uh, five forms actually. So each form does not have particularly much HP, so we can one shot each one of them. And because his ATB is getting reset, because it's effectively a new monster every time that we kill one of the forms, uh, it just never gets to act. At least not as long as we can attack him first. 
get a fire bow and the gold hairpin. Gold hairpin is really good for selling, I guess. Fire bow, probably as well. Using a warp shard in order to get out of here a little bit quicker. And there's that. So where can we get more free stuff is the question at this point. And I'm not entirely sure. We can go to Crescent Island, there is only one item that is basically free. We can just still try to buy things. See whether we can find high potions somewhere. Pinwheel Enhancer Mithril. We already seen this shop actually, now that I think about it. I did not realize those were linked. That's good to know. Normally there's only Bart's clothes and something else in here. Prey and Magic Sword 5. I would be allowed to use Magic Sword 5 if I find more Magic Swords, but that's kind of the restriction. Kotetsu Thunder Whip is interesting, but not useful. Rising Sun is a pretty decent thief's weapon, but I don't really plan on using thieves. Okay, let me actually sell some stuff in order to have more money. Hurricanes are actually normally one gold to sell, but I guess... They made it so it's actually a decent amount instead. Again, we don't have anything that actually can use magic. Ribbons? Similar deal. I guess we could have found equip ribbons. But then again, you can always just buy a ribbon if necessary. Let's see real quick. I already have lucky... No, I don't have any lucky mallets. Status recovery is kind of important, so whenever you find them in the shops, you just buy 20 and you should be set for the rest of the game. Even if a full party. I probably only need 10. Uh, we already have everything checked from here. Diamond shield is interesting because it will give us 45% physical defense on a shield wear such as the mime. This guy gives us one song, which is the elven bow. I'm not sure how an elven bow sounds, but it's probably a lovely sound. Most likely goes like twang wang 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 whenever you shoot it. Okay, so next up. Oh yeah, actually this is an idea. So we can go here. This is Crayclaw spot. Where there's a boss that has a weakness and is normally only has 2000 HP. As long as we don't have to multi-target, we should be fine. With whatever we go for here. Oh, right. I'll go back through here. I don't have too many potions. Maybe I should have bought more potions. So there's three items we can get over here. Do not, do not push it. Pull the lever. 8,000 gold, Kodachi, and 9,900 gold. Basically, three times gold. Kodachi is a ninja-only dagger, and we don't have a ninja. Okay, let's see whether this is going to work. I need to heal up. I only have five potions. Let's hope that is going to be enough, because, well, I'm going to be a bit lazy to get back outside of here. I should have brought more potions. So in order to activate this little cuts in here, we talk to Sid. Which then lifts the airship that we already had from the bottom of the ocean back up and we fight the thing that has 2000 HP. A Abductor! Alrighty, so this is interesting. Let's equip the... You know what, he is susceptible to getting paralyzed, but he is also susceptible to getting put to sleep. So I can use Magic Sword... Oh. Magic Sword 2 does not have sleep, apparently. Well, that's good to know, though. I guess we just attack him. Tried to paralyze him, did not work there. When you see Fairy is basically... Just going forward, trying for... Maybe he is immune against it. Either way, this... Is three more attacks until we win. Oh, that's just rude. Oh, that's just really, really rude. He can use Vampire. <laughs> really? I guess he is not susceptible to getting paralyzed, after all. At least it doesn't look like it. Let's just try this again. So we just attack him until he falls, hopefully. That's one. Yeah, I guess paralyzed does not work. Hurricane would put us into critical HP, and we actually have absolutely no healing items, so that would be bad. 
That's okay. His physical attack is really weak. This is attack number 4. Two more and we should win. So as long as he doesn't use Vampire here, we should be fine. Okay. Goodbye. Abducted down and we get... Wow, that's 52,000 experience and 8 ability points. That's a lot of levels here. <laughs> we get running shoes. Well, that's 25,000 gold, I guess. So that was Cray Claw Spots, which is over here, that lobster. We got running shoes. I guess it's money, so that's not terrible. But the nice thing is, we can actually go to where we just went into the ruins. There's now a meteor, and that meteor has. Same stuff, so, huh? We can actually burst our enemies by equipping the power stuff. Uh, the meteor now has an enemy that has 3000 HP total. We might be able to just kind of brute force it down as well. Thanks to the running suits, this is not necessarily all that far fetched. I'm going to sell this as well, and. All those running shoes. Toad Ball 3 at level 5 Doom. We don't have black magic high enough. Slow Bio Drain Phoenix. Not Phoenix Dance, it's Phoenix, that's the summon spell. Which I never actually used before. Ifrit, we actually already have. Flare? Sleep Blade? I already have it. Yeah, I was wondering whether I already have it or whether it just. just I meant to buy it and I didn't. Okay. So let's see what we have here now. We have a lot more levels than before, actually. But the thing is, I could just sleep in order to recover HP, but then I run into the trouble that I have to kill off my allies again and again, which is rather annoying. So I just go for buying more potions and heal up that way. Thanks to not using any MP, this is not exactly trouble. Maybe if I do those challenges, I should get a cheat code that allows me to I just keep my allies dead, just to make it a bit more nice overall. Since in a regular solo character challenge it's not that big of a deal, you kind of have to only really kill them once in a while. But especially if I were to have a magic uh, caster class, this would end up being kind of a big deal. You know, I did not do a proper circle and this still worked, I'm not entirely sure why. That's interesting. And we get a rune bell. Rune bell is actually... Huh. That might be our best weapon as a geomancer right now. Like, straight up, the rune bell is not a terrible weapon, all things considered. What attitude? The other attitude. And we get another Defender Sword. If we somehow or somewhere pick up Equip Swords, Defender Sword is really nice because we can cast Armor with it, which is kind of a big deal. <laughs> we are level 28. Alright. The so character definitely progresses really quickly through the levels if we just manage to defeat a boss or two. Especially certain bosses just seem to give a lot more experience than others, and I have no idea why that is. So, where did we find the... Potions, because I don't remember. There's potions. Did I not buy them? I didn't properly confirm, I guess. Oh, I should also check Bots' home village for the shops. For potentially really good items. Uh, I thought it was right over here, but I guess it's a bit further. Okay, let's see. Alrighty. Two-handed. We don't have a knight, so we're not allowed to buy it, but if we get to use it... Actually, I'm pretty sure we can't even equip any weapon with our characters that will be able to be two-handed. Unless we get something with the mine. Mute sword magic. That's kind of nice. Hmm. 
is too high level. Sleep on mute seems to be at the higher level than what I anticipated. <laughs> Equip ribbons again. We're not allowed to get it because that's not in our jobs. Just getting a few Phoenix Downs for potential undead encounters. Tents, same deal as before. We don't necessarily want to revive our allies, and it's fine. Okay, so with this... Let's just go through the list, I would say, of encounters. At this point, I would also feel like we are strong enough to just straight up take out whatever is here without any trouble whatsoever. I could go and catch myself a chimera before I go here, thinking about it. So what I'm basically saying is that in order to make this easier for myself, I need to prepare a little bit, just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to capture a chimera right here, which means I need to turn on the encounters. And in this desert here, you always run into a chimera enemy. Chimera enemies, I believe, have 1000 HP. So in order to catch an enemy, you have to put them into low HP, hopefully not killing them. They have to be below one eighth of their maximum HP. So once that is accomplished, you use catch. And we have now a chimera in our pocket. And the catch command now turns into the release command. Which allows us to... Effectively release a chimera. Each individual monster that we can capture, and there's many that we can capture, let me tell you, uh, has their own unique effect in what happens. The chimera uses Aqua Rake. Aqua Rake is a neutral elemental attack, even though it says water, it is actually a neutral element. A uh, neutral elemental attack that deals decent damage to all enemies. And it deals 8 times damage to enemies that are of the a desert variety. So the enemies here are not desert enemies, so it's not gonna deal that much damage, but I should be able to just one-shot the flower without any trouble here. The little flowers, I mean. First I need to release Aqua Rake thanks to the Chimera. And I should be able to go quick enough to kill the Hero Plant if Casey didn't die here before it spawns the little guys again. Alexis and two phoenix stones. Read a bracelet. I don't really know what the bracelet is. I assume that's this thing. I have no idea what the bracelet opens up. Either way, after defeating Carl Boss Spot, we do get to move on to the Siren. We actually could not visit the ship graveyard from the backside. We have to go through there. It's effectively closed on the construction until we defeat Carl Boss. Or well, whatever is in Carl Boss spot. Excalibur. Uh, I don't know whether that's a good sword or a bad sword. Either way, we can't use it because we can't equip sword. Psych magic is for black mage. It's highly unlikely that we get high enough to use that. Mirage West, on the other hand, is really nice because Mirage West gives us one charge of not getting hit by enemies. So that's pretty awesome. Also, I just realized our thieves are awake. So I'm gonna give our thieves... I need to buy them some weapons so they can take care of themselves a bit more quickly and efficiently. Because you do get a cuts in heal before uh, moving on. Uh, I will just kill them off in the boss fight, because we are so high level compared to the boss, whatever it is. It's highly unlikely that it's anything particularly bad, honestly. Possible, but highly unlikely. So three chests here, Earth Bell, Thousand Gill, and Antidote for White Magic. So if I equip red, the exclamation mark red one level one ability that I got, I would be able to use antidote, I think, which 
removes poison. Not that great, but then I have plenty of antidotes, so not exactly a priority. So in Siren Spot we have 850 HP for Odin. Now that's interesting. I don't know what Odin can do, since ab enemies' abilities change based on where they are. So each boss has like a tier rating, and their abilities are adjusted, so an enemy, or an early Odin here in this case, would have a, well, less severe abilities. Since even, let's say, if you uh, scale down the stats and such for a boss, if they have like level 3 ice, it would still deal crazy damage. Okay, that's an instant kill ability. Good thing it didn't hit Ferris. Aside from that, Odin actually is surprisingly vulnerable to a lot of status effects, including Paralyze, but he also does not have much HP here. We learned Equip Whips. We also learned Tame. Oh, the third tablet was here. Nice. Okay. One out of four tablets also has been acquired. So we already did learn to control enemies, which is really handy. But right now I don't feel like I need it anymore. I might go and grind a little bit against shield dragons later, but the main reason why I even wanted to level mediator is because the control ability allows us to, well, control enemies, and that allows for an interesting grinding spot. So what did we have here? I forget what was here. Oh yeah, that was Apocalypse. I could actually capture something that deals a lot of single target damage and then release it here, but it's also not all that necessary. Maybe. Apocalypse is weak against poison-based attacks. We do not have enough high of a magic sword in order to use Venom Blade even if we had it though. So let's just rely on the... Oh, wait. Oh, that's Galura. Hang on. He is actually vulnerable to getting paralyzed, so I guess we just paralyze him. 2600 HP. Yeah, I think cure, cure 1, Antidote and Armor is level 1 white magic, I think. So we need to paralyze him soon again, otherwise he's gonna break out. Oh, kill him, I guess that works too. He always gives a high potion. 20,000 experience is really nice. Red level 2 ability, okay. Anti-barrier. Anti-barrier is... I think that's an item? I'm not sure whether it's an item, or whether it's... It's not anti-magic shell, is it? I think it's a key item. So we should be able to enter barrier tower now. Probably. Either way, um, did I already visit this spot here? 3000 HP on this spot. Anti-barrier is a key item that allows access to extra castle in Worlds 2. Barrier tower is just sub. Alrighty, thank you very much, Lefe. Thank you very much. Alrighty, so here we fight what is normally the Chimera Brain, and we get this time... Carl Boss, which I believe you can be paralyzed. Not sure. Either way, I can be paralyzed, but thanks to having the Mirage Vest, that is not exactly a problem. She tried, she tried to paralyze, but it didn't work. He's weak to lightning, I didn't have, don't have the lightning whip. Either way, let's see, we did just defeat Titan Spot. And we're gonna defeat Chimera Brain Spot. So, thanks to the Mirage Vest. Minor glitch, I can just absolutely destroy this guy since the only thing he does is physically attack. Aside from using Tail Screw, which puts us into critical HP, but since it can never actually deal any regular damage, aside from that we would be perfectly safe. 15,000 experience. Nice. The Excalibur, again, that was not useful, but that's okay. Alrighty, so that's that. What else can we do? We also did defeat this spot and this spot. We can't go to Galura, but we cannot go to Liquid Flame yet. And Escape from Karnak is the same, we don't have Sandworm Bait. Oh, hang on. We can go to the Tycoon Meteor. I forgot about that one. 
Tycoon Meteor is where you find yourself at the very beginning of the game. And this is where an enemy has 2000 HP as a baseline. Normally this is Adamantis, who has both shell and protect, which means he takes only half damage and has really high defense in the first place. Let's see what we have now. Oh, this is Atmos. 2000 HP should not be too bad for Atmos. Plus we have Innate Haste, which he does too, so there's that, but worst case scenario I will need to go and grab like a bear and then just defeat him. By the way, Running Shoes also grant us immunity to being slowed, put to sleep, stunned and stopped. So, it's pretty good. That was the easiest Atmos encounter I've ever seen. Haha. <laughs> Uh, operator theory, the way we handle it is I'm not allowed to buy other abilities from other jobs, but I can... Wow, two tablets already? Nice. But I can fight them and use them. So basically it's kind of a in-between. Teamship key does let you liquid flame castle escape. Oh, that's right, that's the steamship key. I was thinking of something else. Thank you, Excalibrations. Let's go there right now then. Might as well. It's an early game boss tier 1 I believe, so it shouldn't be too difficult. So the boss in here will also have 3000 HP. The stats shouldn't be too terribly strong. I did go the wrong way. Here. In order to enter the steamship we enter it in this section here, which is kind of unusual. Casually you may not even know that you can re-enter the steamship if you want to in this section. Condemned blue magic. I really hope we find exclamation mark blue because exclamation mark blue is crazy good. Flash blue magic. Brawl ability. Oh, brawl is interesting because it does give us monk strength. Which means we actually will deal a good chunk more damage now. With the helmet, not all that great. Mm -hmm. 9,500 gil. It's so much easier to go through these places without having any encounters. Do -do 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 for anybody curious, by the way, this is my third seat. I only completed... Actually, the fourth seat, I only completed two before. So, jumping in on the far right in order to get the... Green Beret. Or, well, the Green Beret spot, I guess. Oops. Accidentally went the wrong way. Venom Sword Magic. Huh. I just talked about that earlier, where it would have been useful against Apocalypse. I believe the only boss who is actually weak against uh, poison. However, there is various other enemies. That's the wrong place, isn't it? Yeah. I'm gonna miss out on the thief's glove over there. Either way, he's the only boss that is actually weak against venom, as in poison element. But at the same time, there are other enemies that are susceptible to being poisoned. And poison might be one of our best weapons against certain bosses if they have a ridiculous amount of HP, since poison always ticks for 1 16th of their maximum HP. We still need to find at least one more level of magic sword, I think, in order to be able to even use venom though. So... It's not guaranteed. Did I...? I derp, didn't I? I did not hit that switch for some reason. Silk rope, right? Alrighty, what do we have here? This is normally liquid flowing, 3000 HP. Shot. Okay, speaking of the devil, this guy here is actually going to be a bit of a problem. 
The problem about him is that he normally counterattacks with petrification moves. And petrification, if you only have a solo character, is an instant kill. Demon's eye, and we're gone. So, luckily we do have an Aegis shield. Which this does give us a bit immunity to petrification. But only the Mime can actually equip a shield. So we kind of have to somehow defeat him as a Mime. I'm not sure how to best accomplish that. Magic Sword level... He's not... He's susceptible to getting poisoned. I don't think we can actually use poison with level 2 Magic Sword though. Um... Preemptive equip whips. I could equip whips. Chain whip is nice so to be able to attack from the back row. Tame mimic. Magic is level one only. Let's see real quick. I check my white. Only antidote. Black is only ice. I'm gonna assume I can use this. Either way. Red is not that great. I'm gonna get Brawl, so I have Monk Strength. Double Lance is actually really good for damage overall, so I don't need to equip Whips. Putting you in the front row, and let's do this. Double Lance attack twice. I don't know whether a Double Lance actually... ...triggers two counter attacks or not. I know if I were to use Brawl with Barehanded, it would trigger two counter attacks, but I have no idea whether the, count, uh, the double lance does or not. Shout does have relatively high physical defense. Let's see how this goes. He does also have drain. I accidentally use mimic, and I mimic literally nothing. Bolt sword, nothing else. Okay. I was just curious. That's really good damage, actually. Again, thanks to the Aegis shield, we are immune against this, and we actually just two shot him. That's pretty awesome. And we get shot. Elder Branch. Okay, Elder Branch allows us access to the Forest of Moor in... World 2. Okay. Do we even open up all the chests? I... Uh, probably? Uh... I mean, I do have haste. Oh, because the encounters are kind of just randomized and where they are, makes it a bit awkward to try and fight stuff. But at the same time, I do one-shot them. Oh! I could steal myself some elixirs. I should pr Yeah, actually, hang on. I'm going to turn into a thief here and steal myself some elixirs. I kind of equip whips. Double lance is still better. In this case, I'm going to just equip brawls for the strength. So, with elixirs, I mean, these guys here have an elixir as a common steal, which means if I manage to steal, I will get an elixir. My defense is high enough that they don't even deal any damage. Hey, <laughs> Soul Shade, Yaga, did you hijack career day for on your own nefarious purpose? Maybe. Something like that. How are you doing? Welcome to you. So I could actually farm elixirs if I really wanted to by running away after stealing. Red shoes. Red shoes is for dancers. Dancers allows them to replace one of the dancers with a sword dance. That is actually one of the more useful dancers. I could steal from those guys. They gave me mage masters, which actually might be a good idea for my allies. But I can be confused, and that is kind of dangerous. So I probably shouldn't. I probably should just buy weapons for my allies to defeat themselves with instead. Rimberry. Looks really fun. Yes, it's basically just a challenge run within another challenge run within a randomizer. That's kind of the short version. I just had that idea of, hmm... You know, the randomizer is neat, but what if I do this? 
Okay, just gonna kill those guys. I probably should equip something else. But then the double lens. Double lens one shots them, but it just has a longer animation. It's really not all that useful. Power ring? Okay. Power ring is going to be annoying because it will auto equip. Fun fact, those Karnaks will actually run away as soon as their master is gone. So I could either attack them or just wait until they go away. Coral Sword is a lightning elemental blade from World 1. Not that strong, but lightning element can actually be really handy. But we can't use swords. So does that. Kill these guys first because they are just the most dangerous. Then I'm going to try and steal from the Gigas. Because you can never really have too many elixirs. I mean, you can, but. I wonder if the elixirs sell for money in this randomizer. They do, you could actually just farm a ton of money in here. Because Dark Matter, for example, they you can buy them for 50,000 gold, but they also sell for 25,000 rather than the 1 gold that you normally get in the base game. Guardian Daggers. Hmm. So I'm kind of wondering... Whether this also applies to... Elixirs. Do Elixirs sell for anything over one gold in any Final Fantasy game? Not normally, but again, the, they are just to the prices for other items too. So it might not be un too unreasonable, I guess. Do I have to flee ability now? Tinkerbell. That's an interesting one. I do have the escape ability, so I could do the thing that I just talked about to not use the power ring. I should deal a lot less damage now. Yeah, it's actually only half the damage. Thief strength is just so low, it's kind of silly. I'm gonna drink something real quick. And I should probably go and save before I go to the boss, because the boss could be a bit of a monster. Black suit. I think that's for mage classes. Elixir. They do s Elixir sell for a lot of money in Tales of Fantasia for the Super Famicom. And that's actually a really good strategy to just sell your first Elixir that you find. Like, unironically, that's a really good strategy. That's what you do in the speedrun. Well, that's what I do in the speedrun. There's not really anybody else who runs it. I just really want those sources out of the way so I don't confuse myself. So let's think about this. Is there any particular boss or enemy that would be worthwhile stealing from? Or where I, let's say, would want to reset for because the steal is just that good? Can anybody think of anything? Kevin. Also, another question. Does the mime kind of like the freelancer get the passive abilities from other classes? Like, let's say I master thief, does the mime get the speed of the thief as well? I'm actually going to just leave this guy here. Check the other chest. Full moon. And I'm running back in order to save real quick, because once again, the boss could just be really, really nasty. And that would be no good. Mime does inherit things from master classes from what you remember. Alrighty, thank you. I figured it does, because it's basically like a freelancer, just a little bit more restricted on equipment, but has three uh, ability slots instead. 
but I wasn't sure. Let's see. What do we get? I should have equipped the Brawl ability. Oh goodness. Uh, this is going to be interesting. Good thing I saved. Because... This is a problem. It is a problem because those guys, when I kill one of them, the others will revive that one. And then they... Counter-attack with Delta attack, which is a guaranteed petification, if I'm not mistaken. So... Yeah. I think the music is broken, guys. Okay with this, I prefer this music. Over the red hue as well. Broke the music! Alrighty, so damage is not the problem. The problem is surviving. Uh, we could see whether the Geomancer has a good terrain ability for this section here. Um, we just go with... I don't even know, dude. Black, that might actually give us more magic power. Running shoes, Tinkerbell, Running Dagger, Tinker, Magus Hat, Black Armor, or Rope. Let's see. Switch the weaker weapon and flat the damage. It's not really going to help me, honestly. Tornado. They are not heavy, so... We can actually do percentile damage. That was 250 damage. Which means they have only... 250 divided by... 3. Okay, that guy is at low HP now. Can you tornado the... Oh, that's not what I had in mind. Oh, that's nice. Okay, that works. That's pretty much what I hoped for. The Moogle suit. Okay, um, chops. We turn into a thief real quick. With the escape ability. Uh, running shoes. Let's go back. <laughs> and I want to steal more elixirs, actually. So, alrighty, this was not too... You're not a... Ah, that's not good. Music is really broken. <laughs> Monster in a box. Spooky quiet indeed. I hope this was one of those where it was a guaranteed Gigas encounter. Unfortunately it is not. As you can see. Uh, let's see. Got these two. Oh wow. This seems to be actually a rare Gigas encounter. So I must have gotten really lucky when I did this earlier. Hmm. I just want one more elixir in this case, because it's also easier to kill that guy rather than anything else. Come on. No country for old fairies. Maybe. We did get a Moogle suit, which allows entrance to the Moogle village, which is kinda neat. Which... Moogle suit is basically just a bunch of items you can get for free, and that's about it. Could you... It's always the exact same RNG, it feels like. Hang on, can I, in this case, also just move the cursor around and get something else? You know what, I'm just gonna run with this. I want to see what's in the chest. Maybe I'll even under the screen. That could have been a thing, but it's kind of curious that it does the exact same thing so many times in a row. You should run away. Oh well, that's okay. Mithril stuff. That was not really worth it, but that's okay. Alrighty. Castle exploded. Oh, we do get stuff. Agility ability? Really? Cold black magic. So the agility ability is the final area, or the final ability of the thief. And I kind of wanted that, which is why I was leveling the thief up. Oh. Oh, I'm going to give the Brawl ability back to the Thief, just to have more strength. 
The brawl ability on a thief is insanely good, like ridiculously insanely good. Because thief is really fast, but normally has like 24 strength, this is about equivalent to a mage. And I get plus 30 strength or so by equipping brawl here. Okay, what else can we fight? Shiva. I forgot about Shiva. So Shiva is in this castle here. Also I will want to check whether I can sell elixirs for money. If I can, then that's actually an interesting way of getting a lot of money rather quickly. Well, I say quickly, it's still a time investment, and you don't necessarily need that much money. The elixirs themselves are somewhat more valuable in a sen uh, at certain times. What level are we? 34. Yeah, we probably want to have a fair bit more than just 34. But we can worry about that a little bit later. So this is normally Shiva. I have no idea how much HP Shiva has. Oh goodness. Um don't have any area of effect ability at all. So the thing is, Necrophobia has, or the little barriers, had their damage nerfed. Because that would otherwise be kind of ridiculous to take them on. Lambergeier, thank you! You think Twitch is playing still silly buggers with me? You're still 26! Crumbs in a row. <laughs> I see. Lambergeier, thank you so much. Welcome back to you for 26 rums in a row. And well, I'm glad you enjoy your stay. Thank you so much. That's really kind of you. How are you doing? Actually, you've been here around for quite a while now. <laughs> Hope you're having a pleasant day. Alrighty, so Necrophobia will use Flash as his very first ability getting out of this. But let's see whether he still has his double attacks and whether he can use Hurricane, which would be really bad for us. First of all, we need to remove the blind. Since if we are blind, we can't really see anything. I mean, it makes sense, right? Blind in this game does work, and it does reduce your damage by 75%. Oh! Right, Shiva doesn't have that much HP, I guess. Plus, it was even spread out among multiple enemies, because the barriers usually have a bunch of HP, too. Mouth stuff, yo! Thank you! Thank you so much for coming back with Switch Prime. Welcome back to you. And well, I'm glad you enjoy your stay. Thank you so much. And it turns out we get the ability here. Alright. So, we still don't have any exclamation mark blue in order to take advantage of the blue magic we find. That's okay though. Seventy-five percent damage reduction. I mean, blind just kind of nullifies the damage, rather than it being reduced. It's, I mean, DPS-wise, you're correct, but it makes you relatively safe against a lot of enemies if you just blind them. All right, we're going to go into the ancient library now, where we go and fight Ifrit. We actually only have access to Ifrit unless we specifically get Ifrit's fire, which is a key item that allows us to go further into the library. Genji Glove. Okay, that's good to know. Alrighty. Alrighty. Okay, so we have Magisa here. Magisa normally opens up with basic level spells, but Ifrit only has 3000 HP, if we have haste, and we are a thief, which means we are way faster than her, so she just dies before she can do anything. <laughs> uh, Iron Helmet, Shrine Page. Okay, Shrine Page is this one, I think, which allows us access to the well, Shrine in World 3. We are using a Warp Shard because there's actually basically nothing anymore to do in World 1, but we're just going to World 2 now. Okay, let's just visit this place here. There is one chest that we could get if we go through a very long series of stuff. I'm too lazy for that, so I'm just gonna grab this thing here that normally has a song, which normally... <laughs> There's a cabin in the book. <laughs> Alright. 
Ah, whatever, let's just... Nah, I, I don't, it's such a long path. I don't want to go there. So downstairs, twice downstairs by the way, there is item shops in Zisa's castle. Let's see, we have White Wind Golem and Death Claw. Break as a spell. We would need more flak magic in order to be able to take advantage of that. Ice rods. I'm actually going to buy like nine of those for potential use in case we need specifically ice. Strength armor is really nice. Nothing great though. So heal as a spell is white magic, but we can't use it with reds. That's fine. Old bolt too. That would be time magic. Cup stuff. Unfortunately, we're not allowed to get this. Actually, we could buy control. Well, I already have control, I guess. So that's just, that's kind of pointless. Phoenix dance, tents, and cabin. Gaia gear. Dark hood. Nothing particularly interesting. Quarter as a spell. That's time magic. We probably can't use it. Speed and charm song. Just in case we get the exclamation mark sing ability, this might be really interesting. Although we can't really use it against the final boss. Because for some reason his basic attack does not knock you out of sing. And if you have only one character to sing, then you will sing forever. Die, because the enemy just hits you. Alrighty. Did I sell, try selling the elixir yet? Not yet, actually. That's a good idea. Okay, uh... I'm not really gonna use the rune bell. It's a cute idea, but not really. Actually, rune bell had element up on all elements. Might have been interesting. Too late now. I'm gonna sell the power ring, because I'm never gonna use it. Magus had diamond armor. Silver thing, Mithril stuff. So, Mirage West is actually really good. I should have quoted Mirage West thinking about it. So, where's the Elixirs? Yep, Elixirs sell for 25,000 gold each. So, if you just go into Karnak and steal from the Titans, they have a guaranteed steal, more or less. You can get rich. So that did, is a change in the randomizer. Flame ring, I don't feel like I have any use for it. Judgment stuff, which I will leave if I use it in combat as an item, it will not break. And it will in fact give me a way to dispel enemies, a leather shield, and need to fire here in high potions. Yes please. Okay, we have high potions now. Also, I'm just gonna buy one more guardian deck here and equip my allies with it. Life, mute. Sure, just in case I ever get to use those. Bolt two swords, probably not. So Dark Heart, Phoenix Stone. It's the same item shop we've seen before. Speed song, charm song, same shop we've seen before. Probably the same thing again, yep. Yeah. Okay. So that's kelp. Where did I leave my boat? On their back. On the desk. Okay, so. The very first encounter you have when... Actually, not the very first one, but one of the first encounters you have when entering... Uh, this place here is you can talk to these the guards. This is something that is a bit weird. You have to specifically talk to them while standing between them. Otherwise this little event here does not start. This guy only has like two and a half thousand HP. I don't actually know how much exactly. And this is Twin Tanya. This is actually slightly spooky. Because Twin Tanya likes to counterattack with Tidal Wave. Oh, okay. Because this is a tier 2 spot, it is downgraded to Aqua Rake counter instead of a Tidal Wave. He should die in two hits though. Okay, Twin Tanya done. Where is the abductor? Is that the abductor? No, that's Stalker. Where is the abductor here? That's oh, we did defeat it, right? 
We can go get the plant. Okay, thank you. That's the abductor. 20,000 experience. And we learned Aqua Rake. And we learned to capture. Sandworm bait. Okay, with sandworm bait we can go and defeat the sandworm in world 1. Uh, let's briefly go and grab the items that are in here. There is two on the left here. Oops. On the left here, I mean. Build up ability in the circlet. Build up is a monk ability that allows you to basically deal double damage on your next attack. But it takes more or less an entire turn until you unleash the attack. Can be useful if you need to deal a lot of damage in one swing, but it's kind of niche, to say the least. I assume those are the same shops that we had before already. Killer bow. No. Yeah, those are pretty much the same shops. I'm gonna go just leave. Except that we will just briefly check... the item that is in the trench here. This is something that I figured out casually when I first played through this game in my first Forge of Fiesta playthrough. Thief's Knife, All right. And it's kind of interesting. This is normally an epi sword, which is a pretty solid sword that can be used by non-knights, such as the Mystic Knight. I guess Mystic Knight is still a knight, but you get the idea. It's not a specifically a knight sword, so other classes that can use regular swords can also use it. So it's pretty awesome like that. Sword. I want my high potions higher up, please. And let's use up the remainder of the potions, because I'm not going to use them in combat. It changed it from a guaranteed epi. I guess, yeah, in this case. Yes. Assuming it was a guaranteed epi at some point, I don't remember, or actually I don't know. I've only recently started playing Career Day, honestly. So, we're in Moor. Let's see what the shop holds for us. Rainbow suit, that's for a dancer. We don't have... We can't even equip it if we wanted to. Not really anything interesting, though. Mostly low-level stuff, too. Hmm. Let's see in here. Equip harps. Again, we are not allowed to buy abilities from classes that we don't have. If we find them, it's fine to use them, though. Uh, Venom, maybe. Venom is basically poisoning an enemy. We already have Vampire, apparently. Ah, oh, there's Exclamation Mark Blue. It's such a strong ability. Such a crazy powerful ability. But I guess not today. Let's see... We already had this shop before. White Wind Golem Brick. Just in case I get enough black magic. Uh, well, finds. In order to use Brick, I guess. Rain Sword Magic. I don't know whether we can actually get to... Oh, we can. Okay. Does it tell us what is in here? That is white magic. So I guess I only get one of the two. Oh well. Size can be interesting, but we probably can't use it until we specifically get white magic. We do have the branch in order to go in here. So let's just go in here and take care of this thing. For anyone familiar with the GBA versions, the Great Sword rather than the Epi Sword, yes, indeed. Mm -hmm -hmm. Crystal Shield. Ah, uh, wasn't there an item on the left side here? No. I never remember where all the items are in this section. Leather clothes. <laughs> Might be only two. Dance ability. Oh, okay. Now the red shoes get interesting. Or the rainbow suit. The thing is, I don't think we can actually equip the rainbow suit or anything like that. Unless we specifically have equip ribbon. Equip ribbon allows you to not just equip ribbons, but also dancer only equipment. So, if we have equip ribbon, 
and then I guess the, really only the mime could do that. Equip ribbon and then equip dance in order to equip the rainbow suit and I guess a ribbon and then dance. Elf keep, we can dodge stuff now I guess. Bard crystal, well that's not gonna be useful unfortunately. Exclamation mark sing would have been really good to pick up though. Monk crystal, oh, all the crystals. Sut and killer ball. So before we go there. So this boss spot normally has 7777 HP for all enemies. I don't know what the calculation is for how much HP an enemy has in this spot specifically. Because normally it's split or th four th separate enemies have 7777, but it might just be different here. So we still have the brawl ability, so our only ability is to attack. Oh, hi. Okay, I get a three minute break here, because Gogo is literally... You just wait, because you mimic him, and he doesn't do anything, so you don't do anything. That makes that easy. You could try to fight him, but he will counterattack with Meteor. And I should also get some food, so I'm gonna do this, so be right back. I'm probably gonna take a bit longer to get food than Gogo takes, so just as I add some.
Alrighty, I'm back. I have two sandwiches now. 55,600 experience. Wow. Stuff of judgment. And instead of Galaf, we now have Kara. Goodbye, Galaf. And that's that, I guess. I believe we are almost maxed out on Thief. That way we will get the agility from the Thief. And afterwards, I guess we will... Max out the Mediator, I guess? Just for a little bit of strength? Huh. Hmm. Hey, Galandir Gaming. Welcome. How are you doing? What level are we now? 38. Decent. Okay, I would say let's go to Hiria Mountain and see what boss we find here. Dagger. Dagger and a hundred gill. Those were just kind of some of the lowest drops you probably couldn't get. Gaia Gear increases earth based damage by 50%, or spell specifically. So, unless we have, like, summon with Titan, it's not that great. Conjure? Fine, Conjure is actually really interesting. What Conjure does, it's a summon spell. In fact, it's the final summon spell. And it allows you to just summon a random while summon. Which... Which summons do we have? Chocobo, Remora, Shiva, Romu, and Ifrit. So if we had better summons, this might have actually been really interesting. If let's say we are missing the low level ones, we just randomly get Bahamut all the time. Oh, the sing ability! The sing ability. Oh, that's really good. And plus 10 MP? Sing is really crazy good. On the Thief, I kind of prefer the Brawl right now, but... Thing? Well, now we go for the songs as well, I guess. So if we get Hero Song and Power Song, that might be, end up being useful. So this thing has like 50,000 50, HP in this spot. And oh boy! I'm not sure what to tell you. This has a lot of physical defense, generally speaking, and armor, so the damage is halved. But this will take a while. And I don't know how dangerous it is. He didn't attack twice. Oh! It doesn't even deal damage. Never mind. So I guess the Heria plant normally has basically no attack power at all. So I'm just holding down the A button and eat a sandwich. You're well, I'm glad to hear that. And yeah, um... I'm basically... I'm sitting in the US right now, currently in Ohio. So, um, the stream time should be a lot more friendly for most people, but that's that. Although, in a sense, you could also say there's a lot more competition for me, where people would like to watch other streamers. So it's kind of interesting to think about it. It also doesn't help that I basically had a three-week period where I couldn't stream. With the plant high, ma high magic defense. Actually, the plant has really low physical defense, but really high magic evasion. The little flowers have a crazy amount of magic defense, though. Anti-magic bow. Well, that certainly was not worth it. That's the wrong thing. Where is it? That's the Hyria plant. Anti-magic bow does not deal any damage. Literally. It's just to mute enemies, and that only with a chance to mute enemies. Such a silly bow. 
Alrighty, over here we go where the Moogles are. Specifically, we have this Moogle here. We. Hmm, summons. Did you guys even hear me? <laughs> oh, well, I'm muted because I'm eating a sandwich on the side here. Oh well. Big bridge key. How <laughs> oddly fitting. How oddly fitting. The big bridge key from Gilgamesh on the bridge. You didn't hear me? Ah. The a dummy. Either way, nothing serious was lost. <laughs> Alrighty, so here we go. Thornlet, counterability, kind drink, Lamia harp, wizard rod. Hmm, these are wizard rod doesn't really help because we can't break equipment. Actually, here's an interesting question. If I break a rod and then mimic breaking the rod, I think I can just repeatedly do the same spell without actually using any items. And in theory, if I equip another rod while mimicking breaking the rod, that should also give me the elemental boost, right? Fish that Moogle. Yeah. Kinda mean, actually. Mm. Mm. Kind of reminds me, I tend to forget about this village here and just skip over it. Let's see what we have in here for now. Order. This might just be the same shop as before. Speed and Charm Song. Since we do have the exclamation mark, sing ability, charm allows us to confuse enemies, more or less guaranteed, and in an easy form, which may or may not be useful. Who knows? Blue mage, well, that's unfortunate. Because we're not gonna get that. By the way, this little girl gives you a free ribbon in World 3. Lair sword, we are not gonna get that many. Last shop they were selling the same songs. Yeah, I remember that too. I think that's pretty much all there is in here. Alrighty, where do we go next? We did just defeat this thing. So... Do we go to world 3 now? What's that? That Biblos, that's probably Biblos. Well, cannon, we can't go there yet. 
We do have Sandworm Bait, so we can do more in World 1, but we can also go into Xtep's Castle right now. Uh, because we did get the Anti-Barrier in order to visit that place. We can defeat Carbuncle in there. I think the basement is a separate instance. There is Xtep's Castle. There we go. I guess I can fight this guy. But this guy normally actually has a crazy amount of HP. Hey, can I get the Gaia Hammer? Like a really crazy amount of HP. But he deals barely any damage. So he, we should be fine on that end. 171 is more than I even anticipated. Alright, let's just attack him instead. Normally the way this works in this spot here is Gilgamesh actually has like 15,000 HP but you only need to deal 1,500 in order to make him go into his AI script and say oh I forgot I left the oven or something like that and run away but because this is randomized so the HP is kind of just taken over so he actually has the much HP now. Alrighty. Titan just counterattacks with Quake as soon as you defeat him. That's all there is to it, really. Oh, the anti barrier lets you get into the basement. The bracelet lets you into the meat castle. Ah, I see. I do have both of those. Thank you. I appreciate that explanation. Oh. Battle Axe, Ice Sword, Magic. So I can enchant my sword, in theory, but I would also say it's significantly more powerful if I use other stuff instead. Wasn't it that you could just straight up walk through the, the wall here somewhere, instead of having to open up this thing? I believe Magus kind of showed me something like that. I have no idea where that is. Or was it here? Somewhere you can walk through the wall here that is not really indicated and I have no idea that's a thing. Bottom left wall you can walk through near the stairs. Yeah, I know that one, but... I thought you could just walk through the wall here as well. At least I saw Magus do something like that. Fucking mullet. The nice thing is we do have a Geomancer job. I'm briefly going to equip that. Just to have immunity to taking damage on damage floors. Thor's hammer. Nine hundred and ninety gil. Switching. Let's go and save real quick. I don't know whether the enemies still appear in this area here. If they do, that might be a bit awkward. Humans are doing his job indeed. Your white magic. That's actually kinda nice. Getting the higher level. Your emission is really nice as a baseline fire spell that is really cost efficient. Hunter Crystal? Oh, that's way too late, though. 
its ring suit, plus 3 strength. Actually, more strength than the dark suit, but less agility and less attack power. Uh, less defense that way around. There's one item over here. Power stuff. Let's us berserk enemies, which may or may not be susceptible to berserk. We can actually use it thanks to the mime. Uh, barrier ability. Oh, there we go. That's what I was thinking of earlier. Barrier is from the Mystic Knight. Okay, going for Carbuncle here. I'm. I still haven't mastered the Thief class. It's kind of crazy. I'm just gonna go with the same strategy. Use Brawl with what we have here. Does anybody know the breakpoint where it would be more efficient for me to use barehanded rather than the double lands? Another Gilgamesh, hi. Which one are you? Carbuncle has like 10,000 HP? I don't remember. Normally I just kill him with break. Isn't bear hand only worth using a monk? So basically monk has the pole. Oh, goodness. How much holy car. So basically a monk has the passive ability of Brawl. And basically I have Brawl now equipped. And that is what effectively makes Barehanded as strong as it is. It gives you a boost to your base attack power and also per level gives you an additional multiplier. That's why Brawl is so strong. And that's why the monk is so strong with just the fists. But if you just give Brawl to another character, they can use their fists just as well as monks. As a matter of fact, literally just as well as monks because you do give them the monk's strength as well by equipping Brawl on those characters. Which is kind of a big deal, honestly. You just answered it as a fourth time. I guess. It did. <laughs> Hold the Genji helmet. And yeah, what Leffen says, basically, the Thief has really, really low base strength, and having Brawl on the Thief gives him the Monk strength, so that's basically like 25 or 30 more strength that we have. So he deals so much more damage, it's actually kind of crazy. Hmm. Not terribly useful things, to say the least. Alright. So this is gonna be Gilgamesh number 4 spot, which we just did fight Gilgamesh number 4. He is just slightly out of place. Here's the Geomancer. Oh, I'm sorry. Not now. Hi, we just saw you earlier, but surprise, it's... <laughs> Alright, hang on. I'm gonna steal a wall ring from him. Carbuncling this guy's. 
They basically just switched places because they felt like it, I guess. Oh, totally. God, that's a lot of damage. Ow. How do you deal so much damage, dude? Ouch. a lot of damage right there. What's my elixirs? I didn't sell them actually. Gilgoth... Oh, that's a good point I left in. That's why he does so much damage. Gilgoth spot has a ton of magic power. Okay, he just switched into his weaker form, so we should deal a good damage. But he still has like 20,000 HP. 4,000... 6,000. Your 2 is gonna heal a bunch. Not even that much. Okay, he switched back, so there's no point in me. By the way, I could have st stolen a second ring if I wanted to. I'm going to see how much damage I will deal with just my bare fists here. Not here, but... Well, actually, I can do this right now. Unfortunately, the bear fists do have a chance to miss. We're just waiting here in order to immediately heal up with high potions as soon as he throws stuff at us. So he has really high physical defense when he is in his first form. And he silently switches to his second form after three attacks in order to use Cure 1. That's also when he no longer has a wall on himself. Basically it's two separate monsters, just kind of hidden away, so to speak. Okay, he just changed again. Alright, the double lance is still better right now. Miss, please, Ferris. Okay, he switches back just now. So I'm going to use a high potion and wait. If we had some form of instant death, like literally Doom or Petrify, we could actually kill the second form of Carbuncle really easily since it is vulnerable to most status effects too. Oh yeah, this bot has a lot of HP, mainly because, again, Gilgamesh has those scripts where he has a lot more HP than you need to deal damage to in the base game, just so he can go through his full script and you don't accidentally straight up kill him. Which you can still technically do, if you switch back. But yeah, it's true. 
This could in theory be better if they critically hit. What? Oh, I did not realize he could use Doom. Okay. Hmm. Alright, I'm warping out of here. And I'm actually going to do a bit of a different strategy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the capture ability from... The Beastmaster. I'm going to turn on encounters right here. And I want to capture one Aqua Thorn. This one. Hopefully it doesn't kill it. Ah, oh, it actually just killed it. How much HP do those thingies have even? So those, when I capture and release them, those Aqua Thorn enemies do have by a weaker dagger, like full moon is weaker, but let's try dagger. Those aqua thorn enemies have Oh, that's the wrong capture ability. <laughs> I need catch and not capture. That's different. But those aqua thorn enemies when you release them, they actually cause instant death on enemies. Uh I need capture, not Wait, not capture, I need catch. Do I not have catch yet? I might not have catch yet. In this case, we just do it the other way around. We give you the agility. <laughs> not that capture, Yaka, the other capture. I mean, you're right. He survived, that's good, so let's try to catch him. Okay, weaken it some more, so it has some HP left. And hello, Dingsbums, welcome, how are you doing? So let's use a weaker dagger here, hopefully not killing it. Ah, I did kill it. I have no idea how much HP those thingies have. 2 times 300 might be fine still. So let's see. If you catch a toad, you can trade it to the old man in the well. It's true, that will give us another item. Weaken it some more. Huh. I don't have the brawl ability, so in theory this might be fine with the fists. Uh, whip is one of the earlier weapons, let's see. Oh! Well, that's more damage. Let's see whether uh, a frog actually survives two attacks. It does, so I can actually catch it. Can you change rolls to decrease your damage? Yes, I can. I did not mean to do that. Uh, I meant to attack, but I was just holding down the A button and didn't switch. Whoopsie. I would like to point out that this was 980 experience, whereas a single Aqua Thorn is 1480. That does not quite add up in my brain. Let's see a chain attack. 864. Too much. But ad adorable, but it's so cute. Yeah, that thing, unfortunately, when you capture an enemy that is toted, it does not cap count as a toad. But that thing is too strong. Uh, chain whip one shots them. So what about. 300, plus a back row Thief's Knife, which should be another 200 in theory.
Capture. The other capture. Weaken it some more. Really. Corner jar? Yeah, corner jar would be really nice because then I would have to only weaken them below half of their HP rather than below one eighth. I'm just gonna punch it. We don't have Brawl active, so it shouldn't deal that much damage. Oh my goodness. I have no idea how much HP it has. I'm gonna punch it once more and then try to catch her again. Or catch again. Well, won't be killing it at the very least, I guess so. Fun fact, that bear snake is gonna die by itself. I'm gonna move into the front row for punching now. I don't think it actually makes a difference whether I'm in the front or the back row. <laughs> you have to pet it at this rate to catch it. I guess so. That is very accurate. Wow. I'm gonna move back into the back row. I guess it did do more damage in the front row. Didn't feel like it, at least not initially. I bet that bear snake is going to die before I catch the aquathone. Weaken it some more. Now it seems like it reduced your damage. Yeah, it does seem like it, I agree. It's weird. Uh, it's not a percentage soul sheet, it's basically you need to weaken them below a certain HP threshold. And it's 12.5% of their maximum HP. There we go. 12.5% of their maximum HP is the goal. Switching to the fist while in the back row doesn't affect them, maybe? Maybe. It's weird. It's possible. Okay, we equip the Guardian Dagger. Use up the rest of our potions. Huh, almost full HP, that's good. And now we are going to one-shot Carbuncle. <laughs> because again, Carbuncle switches to be a different enemy entirely. Wrong place. No, this is actually fine. Carbuncle switches to be a different enemy entirely when you... Oh, it is the wrong place. When you just let him attack three times. Oh, and I forgot to remove the... ...things again. Actually, as a Beastmaster, we might be able to take out Carbuncle the normal way and as well. Just because it might be susceptible to getting paralyzed. While it is in its other form. But paralyze is by no means guaranteed. The whip has a pretty high chance to attempt to paralyze, but there's also a good possibility that it won't even hit. To be fair, Carbuncle in his second form is low level, level 20, so the chance is increased. So that's that. Also, I can probably take out Xtef now that I think about it, by just smashing some light staves into him. But I may want to master Geomancer first, just in order to give the Mime class some more magic power. Since his base magic power is relatively low. Alright, let's try this again. What resource do I use to check all the weaknesses slash ailments weaknesses? 
Uh, basically, what I'm using Soul Shade is I used to use the Final Fantasy V <coughs> algorithms guide that has pretty much all the information that you're looking for, really. Um, what I use nowadays is I created my own Google spreadsheet with weaknesses and such, so that helps a lot as well. Uh, no, I don't think I need a wall ring, honestly. Would be cute, but I prefer to have the thief's agility, so I can actually heal twice. Because I guess Aquathone is not guaranteed to kill. Actually, even if it isn't killing, I might just attempt to see whether I can use the whip to paralyze him. Okay, let's see. Kill him. It missed. So yeah, the Aquathone unfortunately is not a guaranteed hit, because it uses the Aquathone's level in order to try and hit this guy. Alright, let's just see. Paralyze. Okay, he's paralyzed. We might just be able to defeat him this way. But if I do this, I might as well want to use Brawl from the Monk. But at the same time, I wouldn't have the agility, so maybe this is better. Does the Thief Stack not occasionally cause Mark? That's actually a good point. But I would prefer to just paralyze him to death. I need the mirror. <laughs> so in case you heard that in the background, somebody may have just gotten scared by somebody else not making a whole lot of sound when walking upstairs. Oh, <laughs> you heard that. <laughs> I see. So, the paralyzed chance is not particularly great, as it turns out. And now he is back to having really high defense, so we just wait and heal. So actually I like that... Pain Whip strategy. Not that great, I guess, but... Could be worse. Was decent, yeah. I would give that... Uh, exclamation mark stream plus one. He just changed back into his other form, so I can just try and hit him again. Oh, please don't miss. The earlier I paralyzed, the better. Okay, paralyzed again, just before he casts heal. And I think the paralyze lasts like what, two turns, and then he needs to refill his ATB. So basically, however fast he is for two turns, it will still take him until he can move. Monsters might actually be able to move right away again, or just start from wherever their ATB was frozen rather than get reset. I'm not sure about that at all. Okay, there's Q2. Now we can hopefully paralyze him again. Nice. But we get in a lot of damage thanks to those constant paralyzations. Just need to keep an eye on my ATB in the bottom right. Because as soon as it stutters, without anything else happening, that means he switches back to his regular form. Which is also when I want to heal back up to full. Paralyze, please. I think I cannot paralyze while well, he is already paralyzed. Oh, there it is. He switched back. So we just heal.
Oh. Right. That's why we wanted to kill him quicker. I remember now. <laughs> oh, my memory is horrible. So he uses Doom or Break in his third phase dash. Which, we do have an Aegis Shield. I like how I was just holding down the button, assuming that he would go before me, and that worked out, kind of. So, fingers crossed for Aquathon to hit now. If it doesn't hit, we just reset. I'm just gonna use another high potion here. There it he just switched. Because I didn't know when he was switching. Didn't hit. Is there a chance to hit increased by paralyze? No. Uh, the chance to hit for Doom is just a flat percentile chance. Minus level difference in case the enemy is higher level than me, which I don't. I don't or more specifically, in this case, minus level difference in case the enemy is higher level than whatever monster I release in order to cast the spell, which Aquathone is not that high level. I believe Carbuncle's normal second level is level 20, but he might be higher level than before. Plus, he also gains a bunch of magic uh, evasion. And magic evasion is basically after. Uh, base ch spell chance to hit for Doom, I believe that's 75%, minus level difference in case he is higher level, or plus level difference uh, if I'm higher level, or whatever I cast. If that it's, ends up hitting, afterwards there's a flat percentage chance with magic evasion on whether it is going to be actually happening or not. It's so weird that he seems to be slightly slower. But because I have the Thief's Knife equipped... I don't have the Thief's Knife equipped. Come on. Oh my goodness. Missed again. Alright, I'm gonna give this one more shot, and if that doesn't work, we are just gonna... try something some other time. There's something else that deals... instant death. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff, but something that's maybe higher level. I'm going to wait just a little bit. I guess I could try to petrify him. Do we have any way of getting something that petrifies enemies? Probably. Oh, Tankaze! Thank you! Thank you so much for subscribing for 12 arms in a row. Welcome back to you, my friend. And well, I'm glad you enjoy your stay. How are you doing? How's it going? And when can we visit? <laughs> oh, it didn't work. Okay. We're gonna try this some other time. This spot has just too much damage, honestly. Okay, we are using the warp shard in order to get out of here. And we are switching the chop back to Thief, because I still want to master Thief. We are gonna give you the... Uh, brawl ability. Running shoes. Double lands, because that's just better. And we're going to go to the sandworm spot. The sandworm spot... Uh, we can now go to, thanks to having the Sandworm bait. And I'm not even going to say it, because I'm reasonably confident that we can just straight up kill whatever is over here. So 
So this spot here has 3000 HP. Pretty low match attack power overall. And we should be able to just brute force the main cannon. Because its damage is distributed among... Or HP is distributed among three targets. On top of that, uh, Adamantite. Alright. What do I do with Adamantite? I actually don't know. Oh, I can... I can now go to Salt Cannon upstairs. Right, thank you, Soul Shade. Oh. This is awkward. You're doing great. You're much happier than you should be. You got your name changed. <laughs> Why shouldn't you be that happy, honestly? That's pretty awesome. Don't let anything ruin your joy there, honestly. That's pretty sweet. Okay, um... Those... Mm, so, so here's the interesting thing. This guy is actually weak to... Wind. But I don't know whether Gaia counts as a spell, and he might reset on me. Only had to wait seven years to get the name you actually wanted. I see. Let's see. So, Gale Cut is the only thing you get up here, which is normally absolutely completely useless. Except that this guy here is actually susceptible to it. But the problem is, this guy has 12,000 HP in this spot. And I have no idea how much MP he has. Because normally Soul Cannon does not use MP. So... I have no way to attack him without triggering a reset. Except maybe for breaking his stays with the mine? I guess that might work. Also, I may want to have... No crystal shield. I would like to have the Aegis shield. Guess one more uh, magic power. Oh, I can Berserk him. Let's see, I don't know how much attack power Soul Cannon has in this spot, because Soul Cannon never attacks physically. But let's see what happens if I Berserk Omniscient here. Oh. <laughs> I forgot to equip abilities on the mine. Oopsie. I don't need just agility, I also need fight, and I need... I guess I need item in order to do the other thing, but... Uh, power stuff... Let's keep the crystal shield if I want to do the thing. Let's see... So, the one problem is Omniscient innately comes with shell. And I think armor as well, so... The damage we deal to him is significantly reduced. He can be berserked. I forget. Now let's see. <laughs> yeah, that's what I expected. Uh... Omnition deals crazy damage. Can I equip the Mirage Vest? Yes. Okay, this should be working out, in theory. In theory, I can do this. It might take a while, but it should work. Um, instead of agility, maybe I want brawl I think. Yeah, I want brawl, actually. Just to have higher physical damage. So... 
We get the power staff, crystal shield is fine, don't use the thornlet. So anything that increases my strength. Mirage vest is required and running shoes as well. So one of the other problems would be that he uses flare as his final ability, but... It should be fine now. I need item in order to be able to exchange my weapon, otherwise this is gonna be a problem too. <laughs> Okay, so... Actually, not Light Staff, that's not a good weapon to attack with. Just a double lance, pr presumably. So whenever I exchange my weapon, it will change whatever he has. So this should be like 15,000 HP. So 15 attacks should do the trick, that is attack number 2. 3. And yeah, Omniscient does that actually as well, for where he just deals crazy damage when you berserk him. Like, he is way scarier when he actually physically attacks. Five. Than what he normally does anyways. Six. So we do have a solution for this guy, so that's nice. Seven. Eight. Nine. We do have a 45% chance to block attacks. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Omniscient just picked the other tower because he didn't want to shop his friend Minotaurus. I guess so. Fourteen. One or two more attacks should do the trick. Fifteen. Actually, that's not true. The main soul cannon normally has actually twenty-two and a half thousand damage. Sixteen. But the nor normally it explodes after dealing twelve and a half thousand damage. It's just kind of like Gilgamesh, in order to ensure that it can do his death AI script. Once he drops below 10,000 HP, it will do that. But it actually has way more HP. So convenient that mimes can use shields. Probably the one benefit of them. 17,000 experience. Okay. The Falls page we have just acquired, so we can now go into History Falls in World 3. We have yet to enter World 3 at all. That's okay. Okay, back to the Thief with Brawl. Running Shoes, Double Lance. Mirage Best might actually just be better, even though it doesn't give as much defense or agility or strength. But... Blocking physical attacks with it is really good. Especially if those physical attacks can paralyze and such. 5,000 gold. Oops, come on. 2,000 gold. There's two chests on the right side. This is normally Phoenix down here. 12,000 gold instead. And this chest over here normally contains a gold shield. The stealth rope now. Not as good as the dark rope. Only plus one agility, way less defense. Dark rope has a lot more than that. You weren't paying attention. Just burst like with high block slash evasion. Uh, I also used the minor glitch where I equipped the mirage vest, which gives you one uh, charge of image. And that charge of image allows you to. Gungnir? That's not in the normal base game. Huh. That one charge of image gives you. Basically, one physical attack is getting absorbed if it were to hit. And you can use a minor glitch by switching around items in your inventory to reactivate that Mirage Vest effect. Why? I don't know. That's just how it works. 
Okay, the next spot has... Four times a thousand six hundred plus two and a half thousand HP. Which is six thousand four hundred, eight thousand nine hundred HP. In theory. Partisan and level one white ability. But yeah, I did Berserk him because otherwise he would just always reset with whatever I do. Except for maybe breaking light rods. Breaking light rods I should have tried whether I could have killed the other guy. Oh, Leviathan, hi. Okay, um, attacking this guy physically is fine. What is not so fine is if I attack him with magic because then he will counter with Tidal Wave. But he can use Tidal Wave as just a natural ability. He can counter with Entangle, but Entangle will just paralyze. And quite simply because I have the Sprint Boots on, I'm immune to paralyze anyways. Hey there Yusef, welcome, how are you doing? Fifteen thousand experience. Agility up. Okay, we just mastered the uh, Steve class. Crystal shield. That was not worth it. Silver armor, black level two, leather clothes, and gauntlet. Not a bug. Okay. That's unfortunately not what we were looking for. Let kill that turtle though. And that's pretty much all bosses here. I can take our Gilgamesh on the bridge. Or more specifically the Gilgamesh on the bridge spot. I did forget about that. I did get the... I did get the key for the bridge. Because Final Fantasy Cotters need glitch with the Mirage. Yeah, it's a minor glitch. I tend to use it frequently enough. Okay, we have agility now on our Mimic. Um, which is nice. I would like to master probably ne Geomancer next. I probably won't do it, have the agility ability here on you. I don't think anything else will help you. Running shoes. Black circle is really good. Tiara gives me immunity against confusion but has less physical defense. Not sure what's better. Tinkerbell? I don't know which one is better. Oh, didn't I have a rune bell that would increase all my magic base damage? And I kind of sold it. I think I did. That's silly. Hello! Crayclaw. Oh, that's... That's awkward. He is weak to lightning, has relatively high defense. Let's see what terrain ability we get here. Gust. He is... not heavy though, if I'm not mistaken. Unfortunately, Tailscrew is pretty annoying. So he has actually a 2 and 3 chance to use Tailscrew in the next turn as well. Assuming he still has the same AI script. Sonic Boom. And he has another 2 and 3 chance to use Tail Script through again. He should have 6,500 HP in this spot. I'm probably better off to just physically attack. He does not deal much physical damage. Yeah, physical attack is the way to go here. Tinker Bell! So the Rune Bell actually would be way better here than the Tinker Bell. You should have another 2 and 3 chance to use Tail Screw again. Ow, that damage range. So here's a th poor, uh, the tragic thing about Bells. Bells actually have crazy high multipliers for uh, their attack values. And way higher than pretty much any other weapon. The unfortunate thing for Bells is that none of the Bells have particularly much base attack power. So the multiplier is completely wasted because Enemy defense is subtracted before the multiplier hits, which means low base attack weapons are hit really, really hard by that kind of concept. Okay, we get a Holy Spear, and that's it. Bells can also be shot by Mute. Oh, really? <laughs> I did not realize that. That's rude. For no good reason. Yeah. 
Now that's just mean. Okay, we just defeat Gilgamesh on the bridge, that is number two. And I believe we have nothing left to do in World 2, so let's just move on to World 3 at this point. Unless I'm missing something. Let's move on to World 3. And the one village we have not visited yet is Mirage Village for item purposes. I hope to find the magic lamp submesh. So let's see what we have in this shop. This should be two unique shops if I'm not mistaken. Skill toss, equip sword, drink, and wait. Not what I can use. Dragon fangs. Unless I get the combined ability, it's not useful. Uh, I have dark hood, so Pandana is not all that great. Okay, that's all I'm looking for here. There are so many shops in this village. Kind of silly. So we check out the armor shop next. First to front and the back. Guardian, high potion, let's just stock up. Lumina, defend the sword. Hello, break blade. Just in case. Also sleep spell, we might be able to use that. Play sword, love song, would cast stop. But it doesn't really work well on enemies that are heavy. Okay, so front, go oh, first. White rope, we have a dark rope that is, or black rope that is just strictly bad there. Plus vitality on equipment really does not do anything. Do we have mucky mallets? We do. Hello. Pinwheel, if we had throw that would actually be kind of decent. Maiden's kiss, we do have. Revivify, we do have lucky mallets we have. Okay. And that's that. Now we go and just enter the weapon shop from the back because then we can also just shop from the front too. 12,000 gil right here. Hey Tag, I'm back indeed. Welcome back to you as well. Hope you're doing well. No, I missed it. You, if you run straight down, you can actually get past this guy without him blocking you. Come on. Are we in the back of the weapon shop now? Flame shield. Also, beast kill is really nice as a whip. Flame shield, sure. We want to absorb some fire based damage from some enemies. White mage, we can't get that. In fact, we can't really get anything here. Because abilities that we find are fire to use, but abilities that we see in shops, we do not get. Alrighty, and I think that's all the shops that we can access. But there is no magic lamp for sale, which will make the final boss actually a lot more difficult. Unless I missed the magic lamp somewhere. Are the shops in World 3 different in some cities compared to others? Yeah, I'm with you. I have not noticed the difference, but there might be. Alright, let's go to, I guess, the island shrine first. No, wait. We're going to defeat the thing outside of the pyramid first. This is right over here. Uh, Geomancer is probably a pretty poor choice, but I want to get more ability points on the Geomancer, so let's see what it is first. Um, two gargoyles. Hmm. So, we have 20,000 HP total in this spot here. So this is unlikely to work out in our favor. They don't deal much physical damage, but at the same time, this will take a long time. French Spears, 2,000. Not too bad, I guess. I would need to keep track of how much damage I deal to each one of those guys. So the tricky thing about Gargoyles is you want to kill them at the same time. Otherwise, they are just going to revive each other. Uh, I believe we can get Leaf Storm as well, potentially, which has a chance to blind enemies, and I'm pretty sure you can blind Gargoyles. Blinding the damage will be awful. Yeah, the tricky thing will be to actually just kill them more or less at the same time, because I don't even know how much HP they have. There's Leaf Dance.
Leaf Dance has a crazy wide range on how much damage it can deal. Okay, Fusion is also interesting because then... Oh. <laughs> You're not smart. So, basically, Fusion, what the AI is supposed to do is, one cargo fusions the other one, which means they are getting fully healed, both MP and HP get healed to the maximum, and then the other Gorgor should revive that one. But what happens sometimes instead is that they fusion themselves, because they see a gargoyle is low HP, that gargoyle happens to be themselves, they fusion themselves and just kill themselves. And sometimes both of them do the same thing. Alright, we just got the submarine key. Yep, exactly, Dingsbooms. That took ages. I wasn't actually that bad. I expected this to be way worse. This is kind of what I hoped for, to be completely honest. And it ended up working out in our favor, so that's nice. So, um... Curiously enough, there's one item that we can get in here. That is on the top. Not this one. Wasn't there another item that I'm supposed to get on the roof here? Ah, oh, there we go. Oh, is that not randomized? I just got Magic Song, I think. Oh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Rot. It was sarcasm. I'm not good at that. Oh, we do have two tablets. So what we can do is actually we can go ahead and check this thing out. Because there is six items we can get out of here, so let's see whether there's anything particularly worthwhile. Oops, really. Alright, let's see. We have here... Regal Cutlass. No! That's a weak sword. Frog Song, Tiny Song, and Moon Flute. That's blue magic. We can't really use it unless we get exclamation mark blue. Level 4 quarter, level... F Basic level spells. That's kind of interesting, actually. Gold Helm. Not useful. No. Weak. White ability. Yes, actually that would be interesting. Dragon Sword. Which, that's also really interesting. Killer Bow. No, we have one already. Hornajar. Yes, actually that would be pretty nice. Forge Sword is a Samurai Sword. A pretty strong one, too. Black Rope, we already have one. And Drain Sword, which we can't equip. Did we check this one already? Mystic Knight Chop Crystal. No. Okay, there's three items I think that I want. I forget where they are. Gold Helm is not it. White Ability. Gives me basically level 2 white, I think. Dragon Sword. That has both... Basically, you drain HP and MP from enemies, which is really nice. Killabow is not it. Corner jar is nice. Okay, I think that's all there is. Forged. Forged would be worth a bit of money, so I could get it for that reason, but I don't think I really need money. Frog Zone, go for it. Too late, sorry. Hey, Sand Knight, welcome to you. I hope you're doing well. The so corner jar allows me to capture enemies at half HP instead of 1 8. That's way nicer. Um, that's that. The wind shrine. Is there the Chocoba somewhere, by the way? Not the purple one, the other one. Oh, that's in the. Right, hang on. We can check out the... Uh, Sand Dude spot, which has 8800 HP, if I'm not mistaken. I forget where it is, though. Mm. I'm not used to flying for specifically that spot. 
Here we go. This is approximately where it is. It's not too much of a hassle. Uh, it's actually quite nice overall. And confirm. Alrighty, we get a... Yellow Jacobo. So, two things we want to do with the Yellow Jacobo. We want to go to the Magic Lamp spot. Hoping for a Magic Lamp. And... We also want to ride once around the entire world on the Yellow Jacobo to get another quest reward, which is normally the Mirage West. But before that... We get over here. Where this is the Antline spot, which has 8800 HP. Not that much, but it might get a bit awkward. It is a... Cave boss area. Oh, that's interesting. I think that heals him, yep. So I might not have a good way of dealing damage with this thing. Actually, that's pretty solid. Flame is 25% of my maximum HP in damage. He will heal here unless I get to attack first. Okay. That's two attacks. I need nine attacks total. Rush. Pretty weak. That is three. Mel well, actually may need less in case I get good damage rolls. I can heal during this phase, but at the same time he will heal too. But eventually he will run off MP. I don't know how much MP this phase has here. Oh, it's actually a super weak heal anyway, so never mind, it's not even a problem. Let's just go. So interestingly enough, Liquid Flame absorbs a lot of elements that you don't normally even get to worry about. So let's see, does this deal any damage? It does. So the hand form is actually immune against most elements, weirdly enough. Yeah, that little Tinkerbell is surprisingly good, I would say. Now we're in the front row, we deal, take basically double damage from his rush attack or her fingertips. Which neither is particularly dangerous. The most dangerous thing is flame, which is always a counter attack, but also a regular attack of the human form. So preferably, we would never see the human form anymore. Although the hand form does not exactly take much damage, since it has so much more magic defense than the others. It looks like. Of course, the jingle bells of winter drive a drive the living flay away in terror. I guess so. Oh, there we go. That gives me actually a flame ball. Fire skin the level. Fireball, it is called. The Wall Tower Key. Okay, that is something for World 1. And we just continue our journey with the. The cool. Actually, I kind of missed my fork here. I need to go over here first. This is where the magic lamp is gonna be. So we defeated the Antlion spot. I could also visit Gogo now that I have the submarine key. Or Gorgo spot, I guess. That thing has a lot of HP and probably has a lot of magic power. I don't actually know that. And we get... Pulse Tower key. Aced time magic. Huh. Ace Time Magic is actually diamond ability relatively low, so in theory we could actually get it, but at the same time, it's not terribly intriguing, since we do have running shoes. If we didn't have running shoes, that would actually be really awesome. But we do have running shoes, so it's whatever. Okay. Oh, I can't go through here. Why? I should be able to go through here. I'm pretty sure about that. Right? I am so confused. 
I'm pretty sure I should be able to get through there. You could never go through there? Where am I supposed to go around the world then? Is it actually up in the round? I don't think it is. I'm absolutely certain that you can get through there normally. Like 99%. Watch me be wrong, but it's like, that's just in my brain. I'm pretty sure. But I can always be wrong. Of course that can be because of course it doesn't work. So there is something wrong, I guess. Since this is history, I can't do anything here. So let's just go the right most path where we just stick to the right hand side, kind of like a maze. This is not a 3D maze, so it should work in theory that we arrive eventually. That was the cave where you normally find Guido. So, and it normally blocks you. Do I need to go into the cave first in order to unblock it? Normally post the cave when it opens up. Alright. Hooray, I did the cave event. Maybe it's a different trigger now? I see what he's saying now. So basically we are all right, in one way or another. This is indeed where you're normally supposed to be able to pass through, but you cannot pass through there before you... Get to Gita's cave. <laughs> so basically, I cannot get the Mirage Best. Also, apparently, I can open up the menu on the Chocobo. Okay, good to know. In this case, we just use the Warp Shard. And go into Wall's Tower, which should be a super easy fight. Pretty much no matter what, since it only has 1200 HP, that is normally where Galura is. You don't think they got the Trevor involved in this, though? I see. So that might be a bit of an oversight. Because who does that Mirage West side quest? I do. Double lands. Too bad we are not a ninja. You can actually have double double lands. Which is really neat. Silver armor. I'm not gonna even gonna bother saving. I'm sorry. I mean, I assume Lethlin kind of uh, said that earlier. Or saw earlier your message. Showed Esper magic. Okay. Because what I tend to do... At least in slower chats, when I come back after basically being away for a little while, it's just read through all the previous messages. Oh hey, this is a panda. Doesn't look like much of a panda, but it's a panda. You should have train or magic hammer. I'm just gonna attack you. Why did I move to the front row? I'm using a bell anyways. He's one shot. Double double lance is not a bad sometimes. Yes. It has a bit low base damage, but considering you attack four times, it's really good. Trench page. Okay. We can now go into the trench and also history falls. Hey Biospark. Thank you. This is actually Emo Saru's tracker. Called Emo Tracker. And the rest is just basic. From the Forge of Fiesta, Guard Ring is cute, Night Crystal, Times the Blue Magic. So there was effectively just a trench page. 
that I got from here. Aside from that, there was not really anything else. Use the warp shard to get back to world 3, I would say. So, we have mastered Geomancer, which is nice, though now we have a bit more magic power on the mime. Next thing we want to master is... Well, actually the only thing we want to master at this point is Mediator. So... Agility or Brawl? The Mediator's <laughs> strength and agility stats are both mediocre. So there's that. Elf Cape... Uh, Mirage West. Beast kill is actually a pretty decent whip, I guess. Fun fact, a panda is considered a beast, so it would always critically hit. Beast kill always critically hits against beasts. That's just what it does. Um, Alright, where do we go next? Odin spot might be really brutal with just one character, actually. Unless I can insta-kill it or so. So I'm going to go over here. This is where we will find Stalker, but before that... I don't have the Island Shrine page, do I? Do I need it? I don't remember. Let's see, Gargoyles have a combined of 10,000 HP. But I think this works slightly differently when it gets merged. Oh hi! Fun fact, this thing is also considered a beast. So it will always critically hit. Oh. This is no good. Getting older right away is really bad. Plus, I actually forgot to equip the haste shoes, apparently. Why would I forget to equip the haste shoes? Running shoes it is. What did I have captured? Oh yeah, instant death. He did not know she was a beast. It's weird. That's why I remember it. So she counters with drain. We actually haven't found a bone mail. In fact, in all the randomizers I've seen and also played, do not old me, that's just no fun. In all the randomizers I've seen and played, I have never seen a bone mail. It's her hair you need, really need to watch out for. Oh goodness. That's kind of a nightmare scenario where basically the enemy is just a puppet uh, controlled by the hair. Okay, that was less than 5,000 HP. So I actually did not need to reset, apparently. Paris gained a level. Hmm. I'm currently contemplating where I have a good opportunity to grind, and my best thought right now is if I get the Mystic Knight sword ability high enough, to be able to use Break Blade against the Iron Knights or Iron Giants. That's kind of what I can think of. Oh yeah, some of those chests in here might be pretty brutal as well. Okay, we also have the Mediator soon maxed out. She's the final boss in a, of a raid in Final Fantasy XIV and her primary attacks are room wide with attacks with hair. Oh, really? That's terrifying. <laughs> but that actually didn't come just from nowhere, that comment, I guess. A monster in a box. There is a mini boss, and it's he's called Invisible. And he casts Image. Oh, and he can be paralyzed, apparently. I did not know that, so that's convenient. Normally, he's actually pretty tough to take out. With physicals especially, since he just likes to cast image, which makes your next two physical attacks miss. So that makes this relatively simple. Mentability points. A flail, that was not worth it. What did I get? Ah. Uh, I did not pay attention. What did I get just now? I was reading chat with that ninja. 5,000 gil. Leading. There's nothing on the right side. That's just a misleading thing. On the gil. Bronze armor. Thank you, Mr. Crimson. I appreciate that catching up thing. 
Mm -hmm. Earth Bell. Uh, could be interesting. Vitality Magic Song. We do have Sing, actually. That's right, we do have Sing. Bronze Armor, Bronze Shield. Either way, it's not useful. Thank you. Armor White Magic. That might be useful. Monster in a Box. Okay, we have the prototype here. Which... Hmm. He might be able to get stunned as well. He does have pretty decent physical defense and evasion as well. Oh, he's a beast? What? Are you sure? You're sure about that? I did not know that one though. So, unfortunately... Uh, he has an ability called Surge Beam, which deals half of my maximum health in damage. And I'm currently under half my maximum health. I just hope he doesn't use it, really. Maybe I kill him before it gets rough. Okay, we are fine. Learn Missile. Missile is 75% of your current health and damage. Which makes it actually rather scary when he uses Missile and then he could just follow up with Surge Beam and you need to scramble to heal in between above your half of your maximum health. <laughs> You'll like to know Final Fantasy V definition of a beast. Yeah. So here we have 20,000 HP and it's Merogen. She's humanoid actually and can be paralyzed. Um, I don't think I have anything particularly worthwhile against here. Against her, excuse me. So, 20,000 HP it is. She can switch barriers and forms. Right now she's actually weak to fire-based damage, but I do not have any fire-based damage. <laughs> and hey, Neon Lair, welcome. It's going quite fine, thank you. Oh, worth noting that Stalker, for whatever reason, is level 1, I think. So I think the level actually gets transferred over to Merogen, which is why we paralyze her with almost every swing, it looks like. So, convenient, she doesn't have a chance. I'm a hybrid... hybridizing... career day with Forge of Fiesta? Yes, indeed. Along with a solid character challenge, yes. Three mixed into one, meet in the middle, and it's actually a pretty good mix. So far. I might actually... Well, actually, no, we have a mine with a shield. At least I think he only has 20,000 HP. Does anybody actually know a bit more precisely? How is it when... A spot normally has an enemy, like, six Purebros with 1,500 HP each. How is that distributed? Or how much HP does a single boss in the same spot have instead? Does anybody know that? I think if we miss twice in a row, she actually gets a turn. Let's not think about the whipping part too much in this one, by the way. Why did I say anything? These were the very first classes he found? Yes, those were the first four classes I found. Shortly after I did find, like, a black mage. It does include classes I find in a shop. If I find a class in a shop that is, like, 20,000 gold and I can't afford it. It's still the class that I found and I will need to get them. <laughs> Yaga, this is silly. It might be. And Ash the Husky, thank you. Thank you so much for three rums in a row support. Welcome back to you. Well, I'm glad you enjoy your stay. Thank you so much. How are you doing? You assume it's like fi uh, free at the price where the total HP of all enemies is given to a single boss. Now here's the thing, I know that's not the case, because in various instances, boss had significantly less HP than that. Okay, we just mastered Beastmaster as well, we get a Genji shield. This is not what I was looking for. 
wrong thing. I can actually go to Atmos in World 2 as well. Uh, we killed her and we killed Darkstalker. You got burgers! Nice. That's pretty awesome. Enjoy your burgers. Um, There is some items actually kind of left at the entrance. But I forgot that I can just warp outside with the warp shard instead. So I'm, I'm walking, I guess. Not that far. Are there any other chests on the left side here? I don't think there is. No. So, uh, through those tubes here, or vents, I don't even know what you want to call those. We can get into different rooms based on which levers we press here. Uh, I think we have both random encounters, or both chest encounters already, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. This is normally an elixir, I think. Out of habit, I just go straight through though. And a phoenix down. I did not need to go back, I could have just warp sharded out of it. Which I'm gonna do now. Because I am going to go ahead and go back to world 2 and visit Atmos Sprot. With this thing. So submarine is way too fast in World 3. It's normally sp it's normal speedy in World 2, but World 3 is just what is going on? Oh, that's right. I can actually just go over on land. I don't have to dive down to avoid encounters since there's no encounters. Makes it easier to find where I need to go. Don't I run into a bridge here, though? I do. Haha. <laughs> I cannot uh, emerge here. You wish you had burgers? No. Oh, something I read. You apparently can basically emerge below the Ziza's fleet in order to avoid having to get the Hiryu. But I'm just going to assume that's not intended. Where is the entrance to this thing? Do I need to? No, there it is. I was about to wonder, do I need to do the Ziza fleet event first? But no. Hello, how are you doing, sir? So there is chests with dragons and more dragons. If I find a yellow dragon to catch, that would actually be a really good release, I would say. Monster in a box. Oh boy, uh... They are weak against... They are also on the... Not before I do this. I did just master. Three classes. Which means the mime has all of their stats combined. So. I can use stuff here. Let's see. I can make you into a fighter by giving you a brawl. Basically, and fight. What is the last thing that I would want to use? Now you're hungry. Sorry. HP plus 10%. I could equip whips. I don't see the point in that. Uh, oh. Oh, I know. Magic sword level 2. I think I may have the corresponding stuff to me. Could be useful there. Dark Hood, Dark Genji Shield. I prefer the Aegis Shield as an all around weapon. Double Lance, Dutchman Light Staff. Light Staff should deal really good damage against those dragons. They should be weak against Light. 
the question is, though... Do we have what I think we have? Sword... Ice! I do have ice. So I can use the Thieves' Knife in conjunction with Ice Blade. In order to deal a lot of damage here, so... Ice will deal double damage and ignore defense because he's weak to it. And I should have started in the front row. Also, don't use Mimic. That would be silly. Well, a high potion. If you get the rare steal from this guy, it's uh, another thing. He also has 7,500 HP, I think. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna eat his pet. No, I tried that before. Too springy. Wow. Really? Power drink? Well, that was not worth uh, the item, but that was actually kind of worth the experience for that matter. Gauntlet. I don't think Gauntlet is anything useful. Monster in a box! Uh oh. Oh, that's actually good. So it could be two yellow dragons. But instead it's a red dragon, which... Thinking about it, I don't have a fight command. Uh, I don't have an item command, I just realized. So I'm stuck with whatever weapon I equip. I wanted to equip the flame shield because that would, well, absorb fire. But that was not a thing. Oh, it's my time for you. Well then, I wish you a good night, Lethe. Thank you for dropping by. You're pretty awesome. Have a good night. Alamia Harp. Harps, generally speaking, not worth it. So, this boss spot has 20,000 HP. Also, there's one chest at least that does not have an enemy encounter now because there were two already. Dragon Whip. Oh, that's. That's a really good one, actually. Called Dragon Whisker in the Game Boy Advance version. And depending on what we find, Bahamut is still around, so Bahamut would actually take a ton of damage from it. So let's see. Oh, Sandworm. Hmm. Okay, this makes this a little bit awkward. Because I don't have whips. So what I want to do in this case is I actually want to change my abilities around. Instead of Magic Sword, which doesn't do anything here, I would like to have Equip Whips. Because this allows me to equip a whip, as you might expect. Surprise. I need to increase my strength as much as possible. Green Beret is good for that. Genshi Shield is actually really good too. And that's all we need. So, because Sandworm, he is always considered to be in the back row. Which means, unless I have a reach weapon, such as the whip, it's gonna be really awkward. So I don't have Brawl anymore. I guess I could have replaced... I did No, I do have Brawl still. So that's 2000 damage with just a regular attack, and... This guy does not have a weakness to the Dragon Whip. It's just that it deals that much damage. Sandworm is also one of those bosses that is virtually immune to any other status effect, so... Not like I can do much against it. This spot has 20,000 HP, and he should die in just 10 attacks. Oh, thank you, Lathe, thank you. Rest well. So the only thing Sandworm ever does, at least in the base game, is physically attack or... Ah... Uh... Sand attack? I forget what its name is exactly. Basically it deals 240 damage to your entire party, each one of them. And then it in quicksand inflicts HP drain. Oh, it's only 60 damage actually. So he seems very much vanilla and not modified so far anyways. To be fair, Sandworm's AI script is super finicky anyways, so... Uh, 
I don't blame them for not changing it at all. But certain bosses are scaled down in earlier spots. And probably other bosses are scaled up in later spots, I assume, with their abilities and what they do. I don't actually know that. Goodbye. 78,000 experience. Wow. The fourth tablet, there we go. We needed that one. Wait. Okay, submarine does not bring us anywhere else, so... In order to get out of here, I'm just gonna make it simple, use a warp shard. I like the setup with the dragon whip right now, so I'm just gonna keep it. This might actually be our final setup. Maybe I might actually consider other stuff. Alrighty, I think what we want to do is we go to Odin's spot, which I believe Odin has only like 16,000 HP. But the problem is you have a super strict timer on how quick you need to be able to be in order to defeat him. But first we need to get in there. I have no idea how these buttons work, but at some point there's just only one button left and you need to press it. I guess it's a time thing rather than me having to interact with all the buttons. Oh well. There's also a few chests over here that you can get in World 1. But I... I didn't. Because you need to land with the airship specifically in one spot in order to get over here. Time Mage Crystal? Oh, unfortunately that's not useful. So, before we do anything else, we open up this door and go and save because... <sighs> this might not be a reasonable encounter to do with just a solo character. Unless we can cheese it and just insta-kill or something like that. So let's see what it is going to be. If it's Bahamut, we have a pretty solid chance of straight up, straight up killing him. Other than that, I'm not sure. Okay, Ramu. Might still be doable. He doesn't deal much damage. I don't think we can paralyze him. By the way, he needs to fully disappear in order for us to defeat him, so this might be doable. It actually looks pretty good. I don't know how much HP he has though. Let's see, I can actually double check that myself. Odin, he has 17,000 HP, so 10 attacks will do the trick. You can have all my MP, I don't care. Oh, please don't miss. This should be doable. Come on, one more. Oh no! <laughs> this is gonna lose me! This is gonna lose me the game because of the RP at the end. I'm gonna lose this. <laughs> I need to beat him with like 30 seconds on the timer. <laughs> Alright. Okay. I see how it is. He's not heavy. Oh, he's not heavy? Hmm. How can I abuse that? What does terrain give me? Terrain might actually give me a really interesting effect. He's not heavy? I figured he would be heavy. I, To be honest, I don't actually know since I don't usually care too much about Ramu. And hey, Thalfon, welcome. It's going quite well. I've added a bit of a more of an additional challenge on top of it. And it actually made it really intriguing to me. Let's see. 
25% of my maximum health. Oh, boo. Sonic Boom is really good. That's 75% of his current health and damage. There we go, now we're talking. You know, the problem is just that... <laughs> I forgot to pick up the running shoes. This might actually work out here. That'll do. Yeah. Nice, okay. Thank you to UX Calibrations, because I did not realize that he was not heavy. Can you buy any skills from shops? Uh, basically, there's shops that offer skills. Generally speaking, in career day, yes, you can buy a lot of stuff in shops. Got the Gilbo and the Genshi Helmet, and that was not really worth it. But in this kind of specific challenge, I do not just go and buy everything. I'm only allowed to buy skills from classes that I own. But if I pick up skills through chests or pickups, I'm allowed to use them. That's kind of how I play it, which is why I use a brawl here. So this actually worked pretty well, thank you for that heads up. Dark hood, Dragon Whip. You know what, Genji Shield is better. Yeah, excuse me. Aegis Shield. Like if I find the ability to dual wield, that would be amazing. Kinda. I actually don't have particularly good weapons to use yet. You have seen Gogo in this spot was not very nice. Oh yeah, I've seen that too. I've seen Magus just kind of run against the wall there. Because even if you kill him, his text is just so long. Oops, I did not mean to go back in. But we got him. Nice. Oh, the solo character challenge is actually going to be really awkward in the... Power, now that I think about it. I guess I just hope I don't have to go in there. Uh. Because depending on what is in there, that can be pretty rough. I didn't even think about this until literally just now. Uh, let's go to history. We are right here anyways. The speed of the submarine in World 3 is... Insane. I'm not sure why that is. So, history has a number of chests that we can open up, which is nice. Oh, I forgot about you guys. Let's see what's here. I'm not too worried. And we have Bahamut. Ah, uh, Bahamut in such a weak spot. Wait, he is not a dragon? I should survive that? They don't have that much magic power. Ouch! Hole! <laughs> when did I save last? He's a beast! Really? He's a beast? That's so messed up! Alright, about the part where I was not too worried. Now I'm worried. So I don't have a wall ring, because I didn't steal from Carbuncle. Actually, Carbuncle is still around. So there's that. So if he's a beast, that means beast kill should be really good. Why is he a beast? I did not know that. I knew Kalatis Terry is a beast, but this guy? Apparently beast too, I guess. Why did I do that? I just mimic doing nothing. Oh, he's not a beast. I guess I'm just relying on the Aegis shield to block. I mean, I think Beast and Magic Beast is the same thing in this game? Probably? I don't know. Either way, I guess I'm kind of glad after all that he is in a weak spot like this. Because apparently the Dragon Whip is not that good against him. Are beasts and magic beasts separate? I guess that's very possible then. I did not realize there was a separation between the two. 
I always thought that Magic Beast is just Beast. Ether. I'm pretty sure there's normally an Ether in here. Elixir, that's 25,000 gold. Or we just use it. Ice 2. That's nice, but I don't have Black Magic 2. There is two chests on the right side here. 4,000 from the gill. Episode. By the way, fun fact, you can open up this chest over here. Without activating the... Waterfall at all. Bolt Black Magic. Uh, unless I get Black Magic itself, it's not useful. Dragon Crest. Is there any use in randomizer over the Dragon Crest? Titan. Don't have enough summoner spells or abilities. Didiel told us he was a beast slash magic beast. Alright. Artemis Bow. Is that... That was the Artemis Bow last time already, and that is Artemis Bow in the base game too. By the way, fun fact, I did not know this chest here even existed until relatively recently. <laughs> yes, that means I never really... <laughs> I'm grabbing all the chests before I go back. Smoke ability? We can run away from combat now. 20,000 gil. Brave blade? Oh man, I wish I had the equip sword ability now. But I don't get that. I, I already got that. Oops. Okay, Leviathan spot has like 42,000 HP. 40,000 HP it is. 20, uh, 2,000 MP. So this could be interesting. I actually want to fall down. Okay, so he's just pure heavy, not magic beast. Alright, fair enough. Does picking up this tablet do anything? I guess it spawns the boss. If nothing else. So let's see, 40,000 HP in this spot. Whatever it is. Um, wait, did I mark the other one before? I did, Odin, oh, that was. So this is Leviathan's spot. He has a lot of magic power. Pretty fast too. He is level 37, which is actually a lot lower. He would be a dragon, but we already killed Leviathan, so it can't be Leviathan anymore. Magiza. Oh, that's interesting. Magiza. Can be paralyzed, I think. Bolt 2. Well, level 2 spells are not terribly scary. Actually, never mind. Carbuncle uses super scary bolt uh, level 2 spells. So Forza is going to be interesting. I don't know. I think it probably was going to do a lot of damage. Forza can be paralyzed. I remember that. Forza can be paralyzed. It feels like their colors are off. But at the same time, I probably just have never seen them in that spot specifically. Pack on. Okay. Nothing bad. Region is gonna be a bit annoying, but again, nothing bad. Can I just mimic? I can. I can just mimic <laughs> hitting Magiza, which is kind of nice. Because then I did not have to move the cursor over to the left all the time. Nice. Okay, that was easy. That was Leviathan spot. Magisa is also not heavy, but her husband is heavy. Yes, I think that sounds about right. I know he can be paralyzed. That's the one thing I do know. He also can be confused. I do have the sing ability. In case that is ever relevant. Thinking face. Yeah, this is... Really, really easy. He would need a severe attack power boost in order to be dangerous. 40,000 experience. Water scroll, Genji armor. Not what we're looking for. Okay, we into the trench we go.
I do have the trench page, right? But the only page I don't have is the pyramid one. Oh my goodness. Way too fast. Where am I? <laughs> Straight up. The region is too strong. <laughs> yeah, it was too HP. Do I get the passive ability in the mime? Actually, I should probably save before I go here. And yes, there is Dalphon. I can press the B button in order to slow down. But that does not change that the uh, submarine is way too fast. Oh, by the way, the HP growth the higher level you go is more and more, which is kind of neat. Zoom! Oh, I missed it. Also, I'm one space too high in order to go straight into the trench. Okay, what do we have? Stalker! Uh, sure. He can be paralyzed, right? So this should not have too much HP, so... Just need to get lucky. Ha! Ah, I paralyzed an image. Mind Blast. I'm actually going to learn Mind Blast. Mind Blast is really good, by the way, if you use it against Neo Xtef, because it's a guaranteed... P well, paralyze, actually. And... You can paralyze the Grand Cross part and just make sure they never, that the Grand Cross never got the Grand Cross off. Okay, that was simple. Now we just need to wait until they... I wonder whether the Mimic attack would actually mimic attacking the correct guy. Huh. That would be interesting. 97,000 experience? Oh. Pupil, thank you. Thank you so much for a crazy long time of 39 rounds of support. Hello, how are you doing? And welcome back. I'm glad you enjoy your stay. Thank you so much, Pupil. That's really nice of you. How's it going? Oh yeah, there's one more shop. That is the Dwarven shop. I kind of forgot about them. Kind of curious. When I saw the speed at which you move on Magus Stream, I actually thought this is way too fast. Like, this is too fast to be enjoyable. But. Actually, not too bad. It makes it an interesting challenge to try and navigate at this speed. Also, we have the damage floor ability passive now. Level 1 time reach. But thanks to having mastered Geomancer and mine basically being right freelancer against all the stats of all the other classes that you master. Hello, how are you doing? Aizra, that's my one for. I believe we have seen this one here already. This shop. The Wonder Rod. Actually, yes. The Wonder Rod is really good now that I think about it. The Wonder Rod allows me to cast virtually any spell. I can use Shell with this thing. I'm probably going to be a mime in the final fight. Is the speed a setting you can turn off on the randomize itself? I have not seen any setting for it, so I don't know. The Omega Metal. Yep. Doesn't do anything. Arrow 2. Magic Zone. This spell, Ice Two Blade. Okay, we have a magic song. Uh, not sure how useful that will be. Mm. Yes, I heard of the magic lamp, but I have not seen it anywhere for sale. Did I miss any shops? Does anybody know that we may have paid attention or more pet attention than me? Hang on. Okay, I'm actually going to grab all the chests, which oh, actually it's exactly one chest. Go back and then save, because this spot, I believe, has like 17,000 HP normally, so it's not a whole lot. But that's one individual enemy of three. I don't know whether their HP is merged or not. How long do you think this run will last? I really do not know, Primas. I don't know. 
It depends on how well we can defeat the final boss, which might be a bit tricky. Yellow ball has its uses? It does. But I can't equip it. Mm. Yeah, 13,333 HP here. On one of them. On well, half Holly Carnazo here. Which is not a dragon. Might be a beast. Actually, no, I'm pretty sure Holly Carnazo is actually humanoid. Oh. Well, oh, that's a problem. Because I can't unfrog myself. <laughs> I don't have the item command. I can't unfrog myself. Uh, thank you. I would like to stay in the back row. Thank you very much. That's not good. Could you frog me again, please? I think Halicon also likes to use Holy, which might kill me. Because Halicon also naturally has a lot of magic power. <laughs> wow. I have a wall ring. I'm actually going to equip the wall ring and the Genji shield. Slammed. Yes. Accurate. I don't think it matters in which order you open up those chests. Or press those buttons. You just have to press all of them. Yeah. Wall will allow me to... Wall will allow me to just reflect the holy. Does Frog have evasion nullified? It might have actually. Against this shield might not do anything for me right now. That's rude. That's really not good. Because now Holly Kanaz is haste and I'm not. Don't cast shell on yourself, thank you very much. Holy, we'll deal actually 10,000 damage back, which might actually already kill Halekanazo here. Oh, it didn't. Oops. Thank you for unfrogging me. Okay, it definitely has more than 13,000 HP for that matter. Just gonna attack here while I'm not a frog. Even from the front row. Okay, shell means holy will only deal half the damage. But it will still deal a lot of damage. I think I actually get frog before I can attack again. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this Kururu, by the way, is a pretty special form of uh, frog spell because I'm I'm reasonably certain you cannot resist it. So next should be frog again, so we can attack afterwards. Oh, this has a lot more HP than I anticipated. Frog having its defense nullified really does not help us. Prof Ness, thank you for the host, I appreciate that. Good greeting to you, welcome back, how are you doing? Holy. Oh, Dynamo first. I'm actually okay with that. Back in the back row without having to do anything. 
Only should be next. And I get one more attack in, and hopefully this will be enough. Maybe. Oh goodness, it's not. Ow. I'm running out of HP here. If I wasn't this crazy high level, <laughs> that would be a much bigger problem. To be fair, I would probably just add the item command and deal less physical damage. Instead. Oh, that's not good. Dynamo? Okay, holy. Okay, <laughs> that was really close. That was really, really close. That was a lot more HP than anticipated. I'm pretty sure this was all the HP much together now. And we get equipped bows and hear your call. Oh, wow. Equip bows? We can equip bows now? Did I sell the bows? I have a gale bow, that's the thing. I think equip bows might be my best ability here. Profness, thank you. Thank you so much for subscribing for 30. 31 rums in a row with support. Huh. I remember the day as it was just yesterday when I first read your name here in chat and was like, huh, you're that guy that had that really insightful and interesting commentary at GDQ so long ago. Nice. Thank you so much, Prof Nest. That's really, really kind of you. Welcome back. And I'm glad you enjoy your stay. Thank you so much. Is Carbuncle a beast? I don't think he is. I used the beast whip last time already, didn't I? Alrighty. Back to the running shoes, please. And I think it's actually better to equip bows. And maybe something else. Maybe I both equip bows and equip whips. Equip bows actually gives us a lot of strength. Because Hunter has pretty decent strength, about 10 more than a Beastmaster. So Equip Bows gives us that strength. It's not as good as a Monk, but it's actually reasonably close. So Equip Bows also gives us agility, but we already have max agility thanks to the Thief. So what else can we do? All of those abilities are level 1. That for me, that's level 4. That doesn't count. <laughs> that's... That's a really long time ago, Profness. Holy cow. I remember I want to be the guy, yes. It was my very first game I ever streamed. Uh, actually, I guess I should have the item command instead. The Artemis bow. Curious to think about. Green beret. Donut has way more defense. Genshi helmet gives us immunity against getting confused. Genshi armor just has a bunch of defense. That's kind of all it does. Doesn't even have that much magic defense. So Mirage West is probably better on average. Right. Artemis Bow does also extra damage against bees, doesn't it? Oh, a 12 hour stream. And not really. Hey, Profness, how are you doing? Welcome. I can grab a killer. I can grab a killer bow. I have a gale bow. I'm not sure why I need a killer bow, though. I guess instant death is nice, but it's only an 8% chance. But maybe I don't have an option for certain bosses. Oh, that's right. That, sir? Wait, what?
It is... Well, I mean, I basically started the stream today three times. The first time to do a casual randomizer seat of career day alongside Kishore. The second time I did... Uh, Zelda randomizer race, tournament race. And... Oops. Wait, I'm gonna give you guys the Guardian Dagger. That's why I bought them, I guess. Although I do want to keep one Guardian Dagger, thinking about it. So what can I give you instead? Full Moon? That's fine. Has a slight chance to miss. Oh, don't hit yourself. That's just silly. Did he win? No. Wow. What is Artemis Ball strong against? Because I forget. Okay, this spot here has... 7,777 HP, I think, plus NQ is at 4,000, so 13,000. Mimic attack self mimics attack self. Yes, it mimics the target that we attack with. Relative target, no less. Yeah, the thing is, when you attack a group, either enemies or play party group, and the target no longer exists, it will t choose a random target afterwards. Magic Beasts. Alrighty, thank you, Thalfon. So it's the same as the Beast Killer Whip? Or is that actually separate? I guess Artemis Bow does not have a chance to miss. Most bows have a chance to miss. Bye. Neat. Get the Doom X. And I guess that's it. That was Gilgamesh number th 3. Ready to defeat Atmos. And I'm running out of plots to check. I did check this guy. I don't have a Fritz Fire yet. Hmm. So quiet here. Alrighty, in this case... Actually... Maybe... Carbuncle is a magic beast, right? Maybe I'm strong enough now to take on Carbuncle. Because that guy is just a monster. Let's see. Uh, level does not give back here, see? If anything, I might have been lucky. Uh, the chance ag uh, the miss against myself, by the way, was because of the Mirage Best, so that was actually- that had nothing to do with it. Aside from that, I'm gonna get the Dark Armor. Armoncle is a magic beast. Alright, so... I should crit with the thing and ignore defense. Does a crit automatically ignore defense? I feel like I should know that, but I don't. I did not mean to walk through there. I was really confused. Wait, I'm kind of one tile offset. Where I don't mean to be offset. Oh, I also can go to Bahamo spot. I forgot about that. Okay, Carbuncle, we should have a good shot at defeating now. To be fair, I could have defeated XDEF here straight up as well. But... It's not technically required. It will make the final boss easier in the sense. I'm still looking for the magic lamp though. I assume it's not necessarily guaranteed that there even is a magic lamp. The kitty on my side here, it's just... Oh nice. Kinda pawing at the little toy. It's adorable. 
Alright, still a thousand damage, but... Oh, there's the mischance. But Carmuncle also has an innate evasion, so... Might not mean anything. I'm just gonna use an elixir in this case, I guess. I should have used... well, I should have used the flame shield actually, thinking about it. Okay, he's actually no longer a magic beast in his second form, interestingly enough. Oh, that's right, I can't use a shield while wearing a bow. Well, that might be a bit of a problem now, think about it. He takes one turn to turn back. Worst case scenario, I can steal elixirs from Crystal Dragons, I guess. In case I really need more. Yo yo. Oh. Oh, I forgot about that. Wait. That's the second. That's only the second turn he got there. Is that an HP triggered cast? Oh, it might be. You think it's the death counter? That's one attack. It might be. Two. It might be. Three. Stop missing, please, Ferris. Four. Was the kill up a Vulcan? Yes. It's only an eight percent chance, though. It's not great. What's a good capture and release I could get? Eight and a half. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Ah, uh, that one would have been a crit. So, I'm going to equip the... Wait, I could... <laughs> I can... I can just Berserk him in his second form. I'm a dummy, why did I not think of this before? I also could use the Wizard Rod in order to give myself Shell. Oh well. Good ideas. A bit late, but good ideas. Um, I have two wonder rods. Oh, one is the wizard rod. That's a different thing. I guess I don't have another attack weapon. Oh well, I'm just gonna attack with the light stuff then. I have to attack, otherwise it's not gonna work. For changing up things. Well, I would have been a moon against break. Yeah, it does lose reflect. It does lose, uh, as in he's more vulnerable against a lot of status effects, so I should be able to just use Berserk on him, I think. I'm actually not entirely sure, but I think I can just use Berserk on him. So let's see. One. How much HP does he have anyways? I think it looks like it's 24,000 HP or so. Two, so that is a total of eight attacks? That doesn't seem right. Three. Because after six he would be dead. Oh, 
Not four. Four. Five. Welcome, Narcaguga. Hope you're doing well. Exxon? What? He didn't switch. Thank you for the host, I appreciate that. So after five attacks, he seems to switch. Maybe it is 24,000, and I just got, just got unlucky that it didn't hit him enough times. Because of the mischance. One. Two. Tired? Yeah, I can believe that. That's really early. Or late, I guess, depending on how you look at it. Welcome. Hope you had a pleasant night so far. Or a good sleep. Or ho hope you have a good sleep. Could you stop missing, Ferris? Late for you? Fair enough. So he just switched. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to the power stuff and use an elixir for myself. Where are my elixirs? There we go. Phantom Crab, thank you for the host, I appreciate that. Actually, a Raiden host. Welcome everybody. Hope you're doing well. Let's see, this should Berserk him, right? Nope. He apparently is still immune to Berserk. Well, shucks. What about a Gale Bow? 25% chance to use x ride instead. Could be really good. Still a chance to miss. x ride would not miss, but it needs to trigger first. Back to the Artemis Bow. Uh, So, I can attack once, then I'm switching to the Aegis shield for the second attack. Then I equip the Judgment stuff, which should at least deal some damage, I think. Aegis shield has a 1 in 3 chance to block any spell, which seems to be at the vacation, which is if I'm immune to now, thanks to the Aegis shield. Exxon or Doom? Exxon has actually a relatively low chance to hit, in theory. Okay, no damage, never mind then. Still didn't block it. Fairies, come on. That's... silly. Hmm... Rain... Oh, that's an interesting thought. Use terrain. Rain might work because he is not heavy in his second form, and the percentile attack might just do the trick. Can't heal now because I don't have items. Does reflect do anything to spell hit rate? No. Reflect either reflects or it doesn't. There's nothing in between. And yes, he can be paralyzed. That is a thing. I guess last time when I tried that, I just didn't have much damage at all, and paralyze eventually wore off. Too early. I guess also I did not use a shield during that time. So it might be worth a shot again. Okay. He actually might not switch now. Yeah. Oh, we've resisted it. 
we resisted it. Come on, kill him already. Resist it! Ah, oh, Exxon has such a low chance to hit. Exxon has such a low chance to hit. So much health, yeah. Alright, what I need to do is I need to only hit him four times maximum with the Artemis bow and then we wait until he switches. Because then we can use terrain in order to do percentile attack damage. Because terrain has a three in four chance pretty much to use percentile attacks, I think. That's one. That's two. You know, I probably just just concede and use the Wonder Rod for Shell. That's only three attacks so far. And he's going to switch now. Oh wait, he doesn't switch yet. He switches if I have hit two more times. Okay, now we wait. I'm actually just going to defend here. Because this should line up Okay, four attacks apparently already triggered him to go to the next phase. That's not what I had in mind. Thought it was five. Maybe it's just the damage variance? This is six attacks. Seven. And we're gone. Okay. We could also just capture a magic dragon, which does 25% of the maximum health and damage. Oh, wait a second, isn't he also weak to all elements when he is in his second form? I think that's true. Then I could actually just use Judgment Staves. Also, by the way, does Artemis Bow scale off of magic power? Two. Actually, it does make sense. The rain doesn't give magic power. Three. So I guess I'm just waiting here now. I'm going to defend three times. Okay, he just switched. No. Sorry, boom! Gale cut is not what I'm looking for. I actually wanted another Sonic Boom. Dust is not good either. Actually, it's not that high of a chance, I guess, to get the other attack I'm looking for. Okay, now we're dead. I like the idea of terrain. But yeah, he is weak to that thing. I could just break Judgment Staffs over his head, or staves. He should be weak to Holy as well, I think. And yes, Killer Ball will work. He's not heavy, that is accurate. But it's an 8% chance. I feel like I have a better chance to get him low enough with terrain then Sonic Boom should actually happen reasonably frequently. Two. Should. Three. Sonic Boom hit. One more, please. No, give me Sonic Boom. Fairies, please. Come on. There we go. Oh. Come on. One more Sonic Boom, please. 
How much HP does it have? It just switched back. Holy moly, indeed. Resist it! Aww. This location takes 65,535. Wow. Alright. Oh, because his second form also has HP. Gilgamesh's second form, that is. Okay, never mind. I am inclined to agree that maybe we have a better chance with the killer bow instead. Ah. Uh, no, Profness. Uh, normally it is a very cinematic battle, where you deal a certain amount of damage to Gilgamesh, then he goes into a cinematic, has his speech. Basically, the developers wanted to make sure you don't outright kill him, so they gave him way more HP, and his cinematic just triggers once he is below a certain amount of HP. And then he has a second form, which also has a ton of HP that you are not supposed to just kill. It's just to play out the cinematic. Yeah. Alright. Uh, terrain did not work the way we hoped it would. Um... Does Black Level 2 have sleep? Yes. Alright, I can actually just put him to sleep in theory. I can't attack physically, but I can just put him to sleep. <laughs> Ferris, come on. I did not expect Carbon to be such a problem, honestly. This is a monster. Also apparently we are in a speed tie. Wow. Didn't even hit properly yet. Okay, let's try to put him to sleep. He's asleep now. So what do we do? Hmm. Can we poison him? Alright, we win. <laughs> I guess I could have done that before. Uh, Alright, I'm going to get something to drink. Either way, for anybody who is curious what I just did. Poison is 1 16th per tick of damage, so after 16 ticks he should be dead. You can put him to sleep and poison him. Enemies in Final Fantasy V do not wake up unless you hit them physically. And yeah, what is 16 times 3437? He cannot face change because face changing is an action of his.
Oh, I did not mute before. Oops. I'm back. I have water now. Hello. 20,000 experience. That was not worth the trouble. We get a dragon whip. Well, if only we get dual wield now, then we'll be perfect. I actually forgot these chests over here. I completely forgot these exist. And just monies. That's okay. Holy moly, that was a monster. So the only things we haven't done is the Twin Towers and Go-Go spots, I guess. I'm really not looking forward to the Twin Towers because I'm not sure how I approach this yet. <sighs> Definitely not worth the trouble. Even more not worth the trouble. I mean, honestly, who would have thought that Black Magic Level 2 is enough to take out this monstrosity? Actually, I could have used Tame and just alternated Tame and Fight as well. Because I'm pretty sure this should work. I'm going to get item here. Running shoes. And instead of Artemis, but what are we gonna do is we are just gonna break Light Staves over x -Def's head. x -Def is completely optional, we don't have to defeat him. And Light Staves, well, he's weak to Holy, and we're gonna cast Holy. As in, like, he's weak against the Holy element, but we are literally casting the Incarnation of Holy. So it pretty much does not matter what he does. We will kill him before anything bad happens. Actually, he did less damage than I anticipated. Ah, he didn't even use Condemn. I'm pretty sure we could kill him through Condemn with Light Staves. We only need... 3, 4, 5. I'm not playing around with this guy. I might actually just use Light Staves. For the final leg step area as well. Because they are relatively cheap. We have a lot of money. And a lot of items to sell that we don't really need. I didn't... I'm not even bothering equipping a shield, basically. That's how... Crazy running shoes and... Light staves are. And yes, I can buy them. I couldn't buy a whole magic lamp so far, which might end up being a problem. Phase 1 against Hind Legs Death. We can now choose an item. Here you call Pyramid Page and Elder Branch. We have Here you call and Pyramid Page already. So, I guess we get the Pyramid Page. Which, basically, this is a duplicate of a place or of a thing that we can get. So we just defeated X Death. And we do have the pyramid page. So basically, in a sense, we are sequence breaking into the pyramid if we go there now. And before I go there, I'm going to go to Go Go Spot in World 3. Before I do that, I'm going to briefly turn on encounters. Just to kill off my allies. <laughs> Blocked. Denied. Alrighty. Let me... Let me break out the heavy artillery here. There we go. I didn't mark Soul Cannon off the tracker. Actually I did, it just looks like... it's it's just that grey. Turning encounters off again.
Alright, let's visit Go Go. Where was that? Just to the right of here, I think. Something like that? There it is. Alright. Let's pay Gogo a visit. How much HP does Gogo have, by the way? Because you don't normally fight Gogo, I have no idea. To be fair, I have also no idea just because I don't usually fight him in the first place. What I wonder whether climbing Phoenix Tower is worthwhile. Well, that reminds me, I still did not go to Bahamut. I forgot about Bahamut so until now again. Bahamut is going to be next after we visit Gogo here. Let's see. 48,000. Oh. Are you a beast? I hope you're a beast. You're not a beast. So that is 24 attacks. Maybe slightly less. 1, 2, 3, 4. I assume it's the same. At least he doesn't blind me like his brother in the pyramid does. Six. Seven. Eight. Do I need to be worried about his holy counter attack by the way? Fair enough. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. I'm still in my mage equip, now that I think about it. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. I was kind of worried about running out of time and just wanted to use an elixir once I dropped to low HP. But I think it's perfectly fine for me to just... Briefly use a bunch of high potions and also crystal shield, because I didn't find the Genshu shield. I must want to waste that much time. After his next attack, I'm gonna switch back to the Artemis bow. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three might already do it. Don't think it does though. Twenty-three. Oh, it did. Alright. Just barely enough that the chip damage beyond 2200 was just barely enough to make it one attack less. Magic Sword level 3 ability. Ribbon. Well, that's not what I was looking for. Fair enough, though.
Uh, well, Muhammad it is, I guess. Or the pyramid. Dark rope and energy helmet. I like more defense. Mm -hmm. At this rate, we're gonna end up undoing this seed. I mean, it looks like it, yeah. Is there any chests in Phoenix Tower? I don't remember. Also, I'm Pretty sure I should go south in order to get to the area. I'm still hoping for like dual wield or something like that as an ability I can use. We have Sing, which I know the base form of XDEF or 3 XDEF is not gonna work with Sing. Uh, I don't th no, I know there's no key item in Phoenix Tower, but I was wondering whether there's any chests that might be worthwhile to be picked up. Let's see. Bahamut spot uh, 40,000 HP. And it is Chimera Brain, which is actually not heavy. How can we explain? Now we can also poison him. We can also put him to sleep. Chimera Brain's weakness. Chimera Brain. Yeah, you can hold him, you can blind him, you can poison him. You can death him, you can stone him, you can burst with him, you can mute him, you can stop him, and you can... No sleep though. I could Berserk him, I'm not sure how good that is though. Or we could just try to use the killer ball, that's why not. 8% chance to... <laughs> really? Alright. Note. And if it's fire, alright. We have one more place that we can visit. I already accidentally activated the first fire, I guess. The pots have stuff. Isn't that normally just an encounter? Where I need to feed the thing elixirs? Uh, by the way. What boss have we not seen? I just hope I don't have to go to Twin Towers because I might have to figure out a strategy for low level characters to beat one or the other side. Or just power level them. I guess that would be an option for you. Okay, we get one more chest over here. Is there any chests that I made? Previous areas or other areas or. I guess the playing all the pianos would be an item. There's going to be a bunch of chests in the void. Hoping for the something there, I guess. I'm looking for the magic lamp mainly. And we have a Tyrosaurus. Uh, ironically enough, I should be relatively dangerous. Unless I just one shot them. It should be weak. I, I could also just Phoenix down. I felt like using this. Oh! Oh, that's not good. He has 400 HP left. 
Good thing he didn't counter with the thing that he normally counters with. But this should do the trick. Just throw a high potion at him. Because he only has 3,600 HP at this spot. Second tablet. Alrighty, we are ready to go into the void. Wait, that took a while. But first of all, we are going to go back to our first town, which I'm pretty sure contained a bunch of usable things. Also, I might want to just revisit all the shops, because I might just straight up not remember various um, items for sale, because I wasn't sure which cactus I was getting yet. But this was really mostly at the very early game. 200 I cannot get because it's knight ability. I don't have a knight in my team. Do we get anything for pianos? Probably. I would guess so. I don't know though. So this is Rukor. Blue mage, I don't get those. So the little lady here should give me a thing, right? Oh, time magic. Children, Wolf, Flare, Blade, Requiem. Oh, I can actually use Requiem, but there's not really anything on that. I guess if I want to level, I do have Sing. That would be a probably a pretty quick way to power level if I needed to. I already bought both of these, I'm pretty sure. I haven't seen the Hero Song anywhere. I'm gonna get White Wind just in case we get Blue Magic. And Death Claw too, for that reason. This is the one I was going for. I don't remember really what was in the shops here. Rising Sun, Guardian Dagger, Flame, Ether, Turtle Shop, the Wifi. I don't need any MP right now, unless I get like a blue by chance. This is nothing. Magic stops still that I tend to overlook. Okay. I'm just gonna buy 30 of those. I'll find something else to buy, I'm just gonna sell a lot of stuff. I have plenty of things to sell, even elixirs if necessary. Exit psych. Oh. Not what I'm looking for. Just be to the east of here. That's Carbon. Good. Healing stuff. Which, to be fair, healing stuff might be really interesting because it's probably more healing than a high potion. Flame ring, no. 
Those are so cheap, the light staves? Yeah, they are weirdly cheap. I've had them in a previous scene, eat for sale already, and they were equally cheap. Seemed to be a set price, honestly. There's nothing in here. That's all there is, I guess. Yeah. I need to rearrange my menu. Because I need to put stuff up that we need. Uh, such as the Artemis bow. I'm gonna do this later. I'm lazy. I don't even know what I'm gonna use yet in the end. Pretty sure the armor and weapon shops are different though. Arbuncle. I'm not going to get the uh, higher level spells, I don't think. <laughs> so that was the beginning cities. I guess the next one on the list would be Karnak. They make so much noise with the trains whilst they ride by. Crazy. Is anybody wondering if there's... If you hear any loud background sound, I guess. The train sound is mainly because... Uh, there's... Like... More or less open tracks across the street. So they want to make really sure that everybody notices them. Like, there's no barrier that lowers around this area. To be fair, it's a really wide thing, but at the same time, I don't understand the lack of barriers personally. I'm probably just spoiled. Uh, thank you. Oh, there's actually one more shop now. We played, we already got it. Darkness Bow. Yes. Darkness Bow is gonna be useful. Darkness Bow ignores magic evasion in order to apply or inflict darkness. So, there's the shop here, not this one. This guy, after we blow up the thing, Guard of Scan. Well, actually, scan might be useful, I guess. In case I ever use it. But either way, that shop guy is only there after you blow up the castle. He is also there in the vanilla game and sells whips and stuff. Which, if you're like me, you never knew about this guy actually selling things. You haven't heard any background noise. Well, I guess that kind of speaks to the quality of my microphone, then. I'm gonna sell these. I'm not gonna use this one. I only need one killer bow, if any. Can't use the Kodachi. Maybe I can. I can actually not use the Excalibur, anyways. <laughs> I have three Excaliburs, really. Uh, I don't really need this. Not gonna use this. Not gonna use this. Not gonna use those. Not gonna use those. Not gonna use this. Like, just, just weapons and such that, even if I did have the opportunity to use them, I wouldn't, because they're just not good enough, in comparison to other. What is a Gungnir? Gungnir is not in the base game, is it? Oh, wasn't there, like, a dream harp that can inflict sleep as well? I guess I can't equip harps anyways, never mind. Holy Spear, Wizard Rods... Yes, if I want to use terrain. Actually, that might be interesting. Using terrain against Neo X stuff. That might not be the worst idea. Yeah, I could do that probably. In general, Gugnir is the ultimate lance. Okay, I know that much, but 
I don't know in the context of this game what it is about. Like Gugnir is Odin's beer. Is it Odin? It's Odin, yeah. I only need one of these. Oh, there's a brave plant. <laughs> On the road will be nice for using shell, wall ring, I may use guard ring, unfortunately. Pretty much no use. Crystal shields with cell, bone net, cell, the helmet, ring farmer we don't use. Red shoes we have no use. Ribbon, maybe I get a cub ribbon, who knows? We're gonna keep it. Uh, stealth armor, Yara. Is the Tiara the one that gives me resistance against confusion? I know Genji Helmet does. Diamond Plate? I don't think I can use it. Otherwise I would. Because it reduces lightning damage by half. Half that we don't use. On shield. Flame shield we have potentially useful. Oh yeah, I can also catch and release. Might be worth a consideration. Or was it the circlet? Which one is the one that gives immunity to confusion? Is it the circlet or the tiara? Or which one is it? This one. Can't use that. Wait, I can actually use that as a. You can weirdly use some of the heavy armor as a. As a mimic. Range. Not here. I might want to just buy elixirs once I'm done, I guess. Might have a different name in vanilla. I guess? Oh, I didn't want me to talk to him. Sorry! The second time I talked to him in this seat. Also, I click Bahamut. There's two chests in the Twin Tower I guess I'm not gonna get. Although I could probably just warp out of it. Hang on. Have I been in here now already? I'm confusing myself. Yeah, I was. Okay. So... No songs that I found and stuff. There's that one chest in here that I was just too lazy to get. I guess I couldn't wrong grab it. And you'll see why I was too lazy to get it. As we go... Oh, wrong way actually. Go up on the left, I think. And we go across into this door. Then there's nothing in here. It always, I always check. I always check. There's never anything in there. But I keep checking. And you need to talk to this lady. Where you normally have to do the book in the game, but thankfully it's already done in the randomizer, so you don't have to invest any more time than necessary. It's always the same in the game, anyways. Also, there's another map on this table. Oh, there's two chests actually. Bronze shield. Well, that was not worth it. I just know that this chest is, generally speaking, also not worthwhile. Then we have, in this out of the way location, finally we get Float. Bronze Shield. <laughs> that was really not worthwhile. Okay, I think we go into the void now, or am I missing something? Yeah, I think we just go into the void, which should be around here. There it is. Alrighty. So. Oh. That's the first tablet we need in order to get in here. We could have already grabbed those tests here quite a while ago. Oh, Hero Song Magic! There we go, that's what I was looking for. Bolt 2 is not useful. 
15, but I still hope for a magic bump. Your song increases your level as you sing it. Basically, you just start singing and... Every time you get another turn, you increase your level by one. Which means the faster you are with haste blitz and all that stuff, the quicker you increase your level. There's also a speed song. We could have not gone in here because the second tablet was the last one, if I'm not mistaken. So there's a bunch of chests in here. One is notably over here. Fusion blue magic, that's really not good for a solo character. Because you kill yourself in order to heal an ally up to full HP and MP. Which... That would be silly. Float time magic, okay. I might be able to use that with the dimensional magic I have. Okay. Equip Rod's ability. Well, considering I'm using a mimic that has that innately, it's not useful unfortunately. Good though. Okay, do I want to change up anything? No, I think this is a fine loadout. Most of the time. Let's see, what's the boss here? The boss here normally has like 30,000 HP. Oh, there's a Biblos. Uh, Biblos is not heavy, so I can in theory instantly kill him. So this is 18,000 HP, but he is also a magic beast, so Artemis bow should do a lot of work. So in theory, this should crit. If I hit. Sure. Threat would slow me, but I'm immune to slow. Yep. Okay, let's just four attacks in order to kill him. He will start draining once he re goes below a certain HP threshold. Also, armor reduces arch damage done to him by half. Physical, anyways. He's weak against fire, but I don't have any way to exploit that. If I had the fire butes, that might be really interesting, though. But I don't. He can use drain as a counterattack. Right around now, I would guess. I think it's two more attack until he dies. One. Two. Okay, got him. This is the end. We haven't seen Catastrophe yet. So, Float might actually be relevant. Especially if he's not in his usual spot. Does he normally drop one? I don't remember. Okay, now... <laughs> Magus recently blew my mind, showing me that, hey, there's an entrance behind this waterfall. Casually, this must have been the only waterfall I didn't check to go behind, because I checked every other one. <laughs> and it's just like, you can actually go behind there? I never knew that. So we don't really have any way of dealing any damage to Omega, so killing him is kind of out. On the other hand, we could technically take out Shinryu. Oh... I do not have any fire rods to break, otherwise that would be really useful here. Uh, let's see. I don't actually have any idea what Shiva may or may not be weak to. I'll need to look that up. I don't usually fight Shiva. Either way, the Ice Soldiers probably also have a good chunk of HP of the entire thing. Excuse me. What's list and vulnerability? Shiva. Okay, Shiva can be poisoned, slowed, and blinded. So I don't have any way to poison right now, but that might be... I think she mostly uses spells anyways. So... 
Guess we just attack. I honestly don't have a better idea than just attacking. Uh, let's see how heavy her attacks are going to be. Maybe I probably want to use Darkness Bow to blind the commanders. I know they attack physically. Snowstorm. 705. I haven't found any ice shield. Oh, that reminds me, I never went to the pyramid. I should have gone into the pyramid, actually. Then I would have gotten a lot more treasure out of there. Which, the only place that the regular pyramid map can be is in the Twin Towers, which I haven't been yet to. There he is, come on. This is why Equip Bows is not usually the greatest ability, because bows have a really low accuracy. And it's just thanks to the Hunter's Aim command that it's not that big of a deal, usually. I don't know whether the lowest commander just got lucky with his attack, or whether he didn't get blinded yet. But either way, we want to... Equip... Healing a lot. Um... Aegis Shield. I hit myself with it. 675, so that's better than a potion. And very necessary, I guess. So this might take a while until we take them out. Alternatively, you know what, I'm going to reset this and get black magic as one of my slots. Just so we can poison her. Not the greatest, but I feel like it's gonna be a lot faster in the long run. Okay, level 2 black magic, surprisingly useful. Uh, Mirage vest? Sure, why not. Dark hood for speed, Aegis shield for defense, and... Healing rod? Sure. Nice sound effect on the healing rod. Kind of satisfying, I agree. The healing uh, stuff in Final Fantasy VI is really brutal looking when you hit your own allies with it. Like, it's just kind of wham. You feel almost that that must have hurt. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright. Venom. I don't know how much magic defense does he has. There we go. So, I don't know whether those commanders might be weak against any particular elements or any status effects. Ah, I'm just gonna try and put them to sleep. Because I can multi-target sleep. Can I multi-target Toad? I can. Let's try to Toad them. Oh, nice. Toad actually reduces their attack power to... Zero, basically. Eva will die in 16 ticks. I'm just also seeing whether I can put those commanders to sleep. Matter of fact, I can. So the top commander is asleep now. Yeah, I think all of them are asleep, so they are no longer going to waste our turns. And at this point... I don't have equipped bows right now. Cannot be burst, actually, can be blinded. Uh, I might as well prepare the Wonder Rod. Oops. I did not mean to do that. We want to prepare the Wonder Rod to be. just before. Now. The Cure, then there's Antidote now. Next is Silence. I don't think I can silence you. Uh, then is Protect, which is nice. Next is Mini. I want to Mini myself. Uh, where can I Mini? 
then is here too. Then there is revive. So by the way, the rate for anybody who does not know, the way the Wonder Rod works is it basically just cycles from the weakest white magic spell all the way to the strongest one. And then it cycles all the way... Blink is next and then Shell. And then it basically goes... All the way from the weakest black magic spell all the way to the strongest one. So in a sense, I have one use of a specific spell that I prepare. And maybe something that is not too far away to cycle through to it, for that matter. So, the one, what I want is, I want to have Shell on the Wonder Rod, which I can use in the final boss fight, because this halves all the magic damage I receive, and also reduces the chance significantly of status effects hitting me. Which status effects hitting me is not going to be that big of a deal, since Grand Cross will apply them guaranteed anyways, and the other status effects... ...are blocked by other things, generally speaking. I actually need to check whether I can... ...venom those commanders as well, I guess. This might take a while until Shiva dies, because those poison ticks are not particularly fast. Okay, I can poison those guys too. You know, if I just had an ice shield, that would be perfect, but the only shield I found and was one flame shield for sale. That's that. 555. Which means they have a maximum HP of 16 times 555, which actually is a lot. Huh. What's 16 times 555? That's 8880? I guess. I mean, I could attack Shiva too with something. He's weak to fire. Around 9000. Yeah, that sounds about right. For Shiva, what does it take? You know, Fire One is actually <laughs> surprisingly strong. If I equip the Wizard Rod, it will get boosted by 50% even. So I could even do this. Not too bad for a level 1 spell. Because they are all weak to fire, they act their magic defense is nullified. So that helps quite a bit in the fire damage here. Not gonna be fast, but it's gonna be there eventually. Okay, Shiva dead. And I'm just gonna use this opportunity to put my healing rod up here. Oops. Oh, I could just mimic. That's way easier than having to do the entire thing the entire time again. Same with here. Instead of having to manual talk myself, I can just mimic. Ta -da. And then we can just wait. Let's see, we have a dragon whip. Grand Frost Party is a dragon. And also a susceptible to paralyze. Do I want to use whips on the final boss fight? Maybe. So the next place is Apocalypse. It has 27,000 HP. And a stupidly high level. Okay, we close the book again, so we go back and save. Because whatever we may encounter, 
As a solo character, we are never too strong. Face stuff. That's not necessarily true, but... Well. Let's just keep black magic for now. I guess I don't really have any good way of attacking if I keep it. Alternatively, I could... Yeah, no. If I don't have item, I can't heal. If I don't have black I have a fight, I can't attack. So... Bit of a weird... A weird thing going on there. Reset time magic. That's not what I'm looking for. I can break the wizard rod and it will reset the fight. And it doesn't even matter whether the wizard rod gets consumed or not by the break because it resets the fight. That's the first high potion I found in the chest. Alrighty, here we go. 2700 H or 27,000 HP on the apocalypse here. And it's the sergeant. Which I think we are fine with black magic here. I think the sergeant is asleep and some of the wolves. And I'm pretty sure the wolves don't attack on their own volition. So we can just do this. This. So the wolves, by the way, their turns are always nothing. The sergeant is the one that says attack. And that's what happens effectively. So there's that. So all of them are poisoned. And I don't know which one of those guys are not asleep yet. I'm just gonna do this two or three more times. Pretty sure the rightmost one could be still not asleep. So now it just waits. Oh, so at least one of them is not asleep yet. Okay, I think he's asleep now. Basically, I saw a little break there in the ATB, which means one of the enemies get their turn. So... Looks like we are fine now. What I'm gonna do is... No, oh, never mind. I wanted to just attack them with a small spell in order to make sure that they don't have some leftover HP due to rounding of the 16 ticks. But the 17 ticks is probably faster than the recovery I get from after the spell until it starts ticking again. So we just wait. Level 2 black magic. All you need sometimes. Fun fact, I could wake those things up now and they would flee instead. But I feel like I might get more experience if I just kill them instead. So we just wait a little bit longer. The top wolf should die the fastest, I think. Kinda curious that the music doesn't change. Because normally you are kind of in the Karnak castle escape sequence and the music is just the music that placed during the escape. I never noticed that the music basically doesn't change when you enter the boss fight. I guess it makes sense. Okay, goodbye. 48,000 experience. Alright, I kind of hope this might be catastrophic because then it wouldn't be too bad. With, because this is the spot with the least amount of HP remaining, with 20,000 right here. Kuroboros. Uh, interesting enough, we can put them all to sleep. The tricky thing about those guys is that... Uh, traditionally, they just explode on you, and I have no idea how much HP they have. If each one of those has 20,000 HP, I'm not gonna survive a single explosion. But since they can be put to sleep, and their first two turns they don't do anything, um, probably not gonna be that big of a deal. At least one of them is not asleep yet, though. Okay, I'm just gonna see which one it is, but 
you know, poison is really good. Yeah, one of them is not asleep yet. I don't know which one though. I guess I'll figure it out. Two out of three chance that they just physically attack and one in three chance that it will explode in my face instead. Two hundred and eight times sixteen is only three thousand two hundred HP. But they actually would not have particularly much HP. And we could kill them rather easily with like breaking some ice rods. And to be fair, I did buy ice rods uh, to break them. So I probably should just do that. Breaking ice rod gives me a level 3 ice. Let's see what happens if I mimic that. It's empty. Wonder whether you can do some silly things by equipping the wrong stuff and trying to break it. So you have to equip an ice rod, so you cannot get another ice rod breaking for free. So, if you kill those guys while they are still awake, then they would cast life 2 as the counterattack. But I'm pretty sure even if they were awake, if they die to a poison tick, they will not get the counterattack regardless. another level. A lot of HP we have on Fairy Stair. Probably the Beastmaster's HP, which isn't the greatest, but better than the other three poor characters that don't have much more at all. Or chops, I guess. Alright, next spot has, I think, 42,000 HP. Let me double check. Oh, never mind. Actually, it's only 3,333 HP. A lot less than I anticipated. Ha <laughs> ha Ice rods. Okay. So let's see. How far can we get with a level 2 black magics? We have sleep, we have toad, and we have poison. Last tablet. What do we get, Halikarnazo? Oh. Which one are you? I think we haven't had the one on the boat yet. Which means he is, as a matter of fact, susceptible to getting insta-killed. Also, we can berserk him. I'm pretty sure about that. I'm gonna have again she shield Did I sell it? Did I miss it? There's an again she shield. Okay. I'm pretty sure he can be berserked. Yep, alrighty. He's not gonna do anything aside from physical attacks now. Um those shouldn't be too bad at all. On the other hand, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. Let's see, how much damage does that do? Judgment staff. 400. That gotta take a while. That has 33,000 HP here. What about the light staff? Other than 50, that's even worse. What about... I guess breaking Azeroth is my best shot <laughs> otherwise. Uh. Yeah, that's... That's kind of all there is to it. I just break the ice rods. What else am I gonna use the ice rods for? Mm, maybe for the final phase of X-Death, Neo-X-Death? 
Venom? Um, I don't think he can be put. Let's see. Pretty sure this is the boat Gilgamesh. Uh, old, blind, mute, berserk, deaf. Oh. I'm actually going to blind him and then use the killable. So that means I need to equip both. Running shoes is good. Dark. Actually, Mirage is just fine. Dark hood. Artemis bow is. Okay. The power staff, and I also get the Genji shield. Pretty sure this is faster. Yeah, he cannot be poisoned, unfortunately. There's a number of enemies that, or bosses that can be poisoned. A lot of them... You just have better methods of disposing of them, usually. Like, literally the previous th three bosses usually have other methods of dealing with them. Usually. Alright. So, uh, first we attack him with the uh, power staff. This is a guaranteed berserk. It never misses in case the enemy is vulnerable to getting berserked. Next, we will switch out the shield and the weapon for the darkness bow, so 75% of his attacks will miss, assuming we hit with the darkness. Just gonna try twice. This has a very high probability of just blinding him. He might not be blinded because he did remove my thing. Also, I have no idea how much damage he will deal. Not worry, I guess. Good, you didn't please not miss. Okay, he is actually blinded. I was just unlucky. So, in this case, we are going to switch over to the killer ball. And whoever mentioned that a killable could actually be useful, you were absolutely right. I didn't, I didn't expect it. To be fair, I kind of also expected to have like an assassin dagger or something else by now that has a chance to insta kill. But nope, I guess not. <laughs> So we are just hoping for the 8% chance of the killer bow to proc now. Before we plink him to death with a 30% chance to miss. Which apparently he has less of a chance to miss, at least it feels like it. Of course, which is kind of not true, but... Perception. There we go, that was it. When you see the critical strike from the killer bow, that is an instant kill. Alrighty, he's down. Didn't do even his outro. Killable gun. And she shield back here. And just the light stuff. But as usual, it's just gonna go back. Next part is actually 42,000 HP. With Twin Tanya. Ooh, yeah, it's 42,000. I don't think it's any more than that. We also actually almost mastered the mind job, curious enough. Mime ended up being significantly more useful than I anticipated. I initially thought this is just a horrible combination of classes, but actually not too bad. Well, I guess partially thanks to being able to equip bows. Alrighty, what do we have? Oh, this is Catastrophic. Aha. Uh, let's see, we can berserk him. I know that much. And I'm pretty sure he is susceptible to getting poisoned. Old blind poison peril is slow. So Paralyze and Poison is actually the name of the game here, it looks like. No Berserk. Also blind. Ah. Alright. Let's see.
let's see. I need a better setup for this guy. We can poison him, but I need black magic for that. But before that, I really hope that float is a low level dimensional ability so I can cast float on myself. Oh man, not low enough. I can't just float. This is so much easier. You know what? We're doing it. We're just going to get outside real quick. And what I'm going to do is I will get... I need item and I need thing. Sure, these equipments are fine. As long as I have the running shoes. Then we go to Hriya Mountain. And on Hriya Mountain... We are going to... Get into an encounter with two... Venom birdies. Killer Avias, I believe they're called. Right here. Conflict. Encounter on. There's a pretty high chance of an encounter. No guarantee though. Let's see. Ah, uh, why are you here, Golem? I'm pretty sure Golem is not supposed to appear here anymore. Either way, it shouldn't impact. What else we get? Not what I'm looking for. Come on. Gonna be a bit of a walk back to where I came from, but at the same time, not nearly as bad as if there was encounters. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. The sing, and we actually have all the songs. Nice. So we confused those guys. Or at least try to confuse them. And then we use an ether on them. Now he hopefully casts float on me. And we just wait. I just need float. Beaky's petrification would be instant death if he targets himself. Actually, just the physical attack if he targets himself will kill him too. Venom is poison, so that wouldn't be too bad. Buddy, please use float. Thank you. Alright. Now, with float, we can easily take care of those guys. Or catastrophe, because you can really easily exploit catastrophe AI by having one character in your party float and giving them a wall ring. Because Catastrophe's AI is like, oh, a cactus in your power is floating. Let me try to remove that with a spell called Gravity 100. And Gravity 100 can be reflected. The wall ring will just straight up reflect it. So that's nice. Also, we have three pieces of Genji equipment. Silly. Okay, Dark Hurts. Let's see. Make a shield, please. Oh, I'm actually going to go into the pyramid before I go back because I really would like to have a better ability. And we need to take out the two gargos before we get there, though. Oh, I forgot about you. I have no idea what this guy is susceptible to or not. Because it's like... He's not even on my list of enemies. He is not even on my list of enemies. Yeah, I have no idea what this guy can be hit with. Why do I have this still? I can slow. So, I have the hero song not active. Which gradually increases my levels. Which means... I can add up to 99 levels of, on my character. However, there's a problem with that. 
And the problem might actually cause me to die here, potentially. Because when this guy gets out of his wing form, he will cast Breath Wing, which is 25% of my maximum health and damage, which means 4 attacks and I'm dead. So, he needs to hit me physically, in order for me to snap out of that uh, singing. So there's that. So, I'm actually just going to take a random dagger and start hitting him, I think. I probably should deal a lot of damage now. I guess I could also sing the magic song though. Just to increase my magic power and light stuff is based on magic power. Isn't this the first boss? Yes it is. Bring your Yaga to work day. I see. Hey Shiva, welcome. How are you doing? So if he just keeps using Breathwing, he can't kill me. Hope he's not smart enough to do that. But at the same time, he might be. On the bright side, we just keep charging up our magic power. So if we ever get to attack again, our magic power is going to be through the roof. Because again, it's plus 99 magic power in the end. But no notification might be sent to arrive. I don't really understand, but okay. Ah, I just realized I don't have a way to attack. Oh. Well, I guess I can break light staves. Well, that's pretty good damage. Oh, I see what you mean now. That's awkward. Okay. No. Alright, I need to just get a general ability to attack at this point. So that means we want to get fight, we want item, and we Probably want equips. Whips. Just making it simple. Equip whips is really good. Engine equipment is fine. I forgot to unequip or stop encounters. We couldn't start this entire week before three year roundabout. Oh. You run out with those spikes, you get poisoned. Ah, awesome, eh? It's right at 5 a.m. right now. Well, I mean, we'd consider that to be positive. It's not gonna be as dark. We can actually see something. Alternatively, pretty horrible when you're trying to sleep. Oh, is that actually a mini boss? I guess. Grand Mummy? I have to admit, I have no idea what this thing is. Tried to paralyze it, didn't work. Might have missed, he might just be immune to paralyzation. Do you have by chance blackout blinds or something like that? Might be a worthwhile investment. Holy sword magic. Well, I need magic sword higher level. No. We have at least an AC, so it's not gonna be too hot to sleep.
I like how you put that. You listen to something boring or Carl Sagan to sleep. I like it. Okay, I just realized that I want to actually have the sing ability here in order to sing those under to death because there's a lot of enemies in here that... Or a lot, a lot of chests in here that are just, well, lots of enemies. And those enemies are all susceptible to... ...being killed by stuff that is anti-under, such as Requiem. Requiem absolutely wrecks enemies that are undead. They only have about half as much HP as I just dealt damage right there. Okay. Hurricane. First ring. Oops, excuse me. Yeah, I understand that, Shiva. I definitely understand that. A very really nice dream to fall asleep to. I am inclined to agree. Okay, there is four chests. In this room. One of them contains a zombie dragon. I don't know which one. But again, it's a zombie, so we just requiem it a few times. Requiem. I suggest you try to go to bed. <laughs> Alright, take care, Shiva. Thank you for dropping by. Have a good night. Or have a good sleep anyways, even if it's not night anymore. I give it a host. Would revive if I be better for zombie dragons, just instant kill it. So, three things. Unfortunately, no. I like your idea, though. Unfortunately, no, but because revivify does not actually instantly kill enemies in Final Fantasy V. You have to use a Phoenix down for that. And Phoenix stuns don't work because they are considered to be heavy, and anything that is heavy cannot normally be instantly killed by various effects, such as an instant kill effect from a... a death thingy. Hey Chaos Kitty, welcome back. Welcome home. One of those chests contains statues. And those statues, I will probably just use softs in order to get rid of them. They guaranteed die to one soft eat. Special shield, battle axe. Okay. dagger. I actually need to fall down one of those chutes anyways. Dark Mather, monster in a box. Dark Mather is actually normally here. Normally completely useless, but it randomizes 25,000 gold. So that's quite something. Oh my god, metal. Unfortunately, even in randomizer, still completely useless. Oh, hi. Uh... Not sure what to do with you guys. I just don't have a general a good general attack ability. I can blade counter. Oh wow that actually That ages me. That's not good. Birds are quite magic. Okay, uh what do we do against those freaks? Um Right terrain I guess? Running shoes. Black magic. Tiara. Chocolate. Actually, Tiara is anti confusion. Purple is better right now. Um, Wizard stuff, I guess, for maximum coverage for elemental attacks. Let's see how well rain works. Oh, you are different, guys. This is actually not good. Dark Wizard has an instant kill attack. And he is heavy. 
Sonic Boom. They have exactly 4000 HP it looks like, because that is 3 quarters HP damage. The rain is normally horrible in the pyramid because it's like poison mist and all kinds of things that just don't really affect on that. So... Yeah, cave-in though. That's really good. It's basically a meteor, actually. No, it's literally a meteor. Just a different, I mean, a different animation. So that's very good. Yeah, okay, that worked well. Geomancer is not a useless guy. It's Kaiser Knuckle. Okay. That's the rare drop from those guys. I need to fall down the uppermost hole, which actually doesn't make any sense visually, unless this staircase just goes way further up. Oh well. Make it there, thank you. For jumping the frogs? Wait, no, hang on. Make it there, welcome! How are you doing? <laughs> Please drop the frogs, they are friends, not food. Please? Either way, I hope you're doing well. I need to get rid of that curse ring. It's pretty annoying that it automatically gets equipped. Right. Interesting enough, Thief's Knife is not too bad of an auto-equip, because it does give me plus one agility, and those guys die in one Requiem anyways. Oh no, I dealt 600 less damage! Only 1400 damage overkill now. Flame shield, I really wanted an ice shield, although at this point the ice shield is pretty much over anyways as well. Okay, a few more rooms with a few more chests. And hey Dialike, welcome, how are you doing? How do I like the career day randomizer? Uh, casually? It's really really nice to just casually play honestly. Like really pleasant. In a race setting, I would not really want to play this currently. Because it's just like, you go to the correct path, hurry, you win. If you don't, all too bad, and there's not really much you can do about that, basically. I think we can get rid of those rocks by resetting the encounter. Maybe. Oh well, they just kill them. Basically, the way I uh, mentioned it last time was in comparison to A Link to the Past randomizer, where it's like, even though you are still looking for various items and you don't know where they are and they can be in virtually any chest, uh, you still have a generally an overarching goal instead. The overarching goal in this game is the four tablets, but they do not have set positions or locations where you know you want to work towards. However, so it's not. There's no way that it's guaranteed, unfortunately, that it can eventually finish this or not finish this for that matter. Unless you just check virtually everything, or more specifically, check all the bosses. In at least a Link to the Past randomizer, you go and kill some stuff, kill some more stuff, but generally speaking, at least you're making progression towards completing the dungeons, which is the overarching goal. The crystals, it's kind of what I'm missing as a concept here. Crystal shield. But overall, it's really, really nice. Looks like fun, yes, I agree. Glad to hear you're doing good. Little shell. There's only three more, four more chests actually at this point. The two in here, and then the other one. Still haven't seen the statue chest. Well, still expecting that one. Energy shield. We already have one. Life 2 right magic. Unfortunately, really not what I'm looking for. I still need... I feel like I need some good items. Alrighty. 
Uh, we actually want to do softs. I have exactly five softs. That's why I didn't kill the second rock in the previous encounter with another soft because I only have five left. Basically, the general gist of it is soft or gold needle in other translations. Remove petrification status if you use it on one of your own players. Those things are, well, just stone by nature. And thus, they if you remove the stone nature of them, they become too soft to live. That's actually quite literally what the... Uh, PlayStation translation says. We did Free Enterprise for a good while. This seems to have a bit of a different feel. Yes, the different feel is mainly that in Free Enterprise you find key items in random chests. Wait, do you? Actually, I don't even know. I know you find them in specific spots. But do you also find them in random chests? Either way, it's a bit too random for me. As ironic as that might sound. Dark Matter and Monster in a Box. Okay, and that's the entire pyramid. We need the level, so that's nice. Darkness Ball, we already had one. I actually want to get rid of duplicates of items that I do use. Contains summoner crystal. I want to get rid of item, uh, duplicates of items that I do use, just because otherwise they stack in weird ways when I equip them in combat, and then they are just all over the place in my inventory, rather than me being able to organize them. So that was nothing interesting there, really. I see, that makes sense to Kaza. Maybe Mazamuna could be useful if I get the ability to equip those swords. They must defend the sword. Ragnarok would only be useful if I get both dual wield and equip swords. Got rid of the curse ring, we really don't want that. Uh, Genji armor is fine. Killable has actually been surprisingly useful, we don't need it. We use this thing, we have better weapon. Hurricanes, full level. We have two Genji shields, get rid of one. Two near, let's just sell it. Because even if I get equipped spears, I likely won't use it. Hardened daggers, can't use them. Yoichi bow might be really good, we'll see. Shield, bandana. Hunter bell. Great blade. Lots of... Okay. Do we have, by chance, just elixirs around here? Does anybody remember where the high potions were that I bought? Because I don't. How many high potions do I have left? 40. That should be fine, actually. Okay, with this... We go back into World 3. And... We should still be floating, right? I never removed that. Yep. That was the entire reason why I went out of the void in the first place, because I realized, oh well, Catastrophe is around here, and I hope he has low HP, but he is not in a low HP spot. So, now that we are floating, we can cheese Catastrophe. I'm actually going to prepare for that already. I'm going to equip... Black again. Level 2 black magic. Incredibly useful. Crazy. This time we want the wall ring. Uh, 
Barrage vest, I guess. Not really all that relevant, what I get right now. I'll change it out anyways. I think she's is fine. So, once again, we're going to face up against a guy that is called Catastrophe. And Catastrophe uh, normally has 20,000 HP, so even if you don't have this setup, it's reasonably simple to just kill him instead. But the problem I have right now, he's in a spot where he has 42,000 HP. 40,000 HP in Pentania spot. So bursting him down is not as much of an option. He is susceptible to getting poisoned, but that is still quite a while until he takes 16 poison ticks until he's dead. So my current option, or the way I'm gonna be handling this, is I just got float. And his AI script tells him if one of your party members is floating in your party, he needs to use gravity 100 in order to remove that float status. And only if there's no other, uh, no party member floating, he is allowed to use anything else. So, because we are, as a matter of fact, floating, and have a wall ring equipped, he's gonna try and use gravity 100. But because we have a wall ring equipped, it's not gonna land at all, and we are just completely unscathed. Did I accidentally activate that twice? Guess so. Need to keep the door uh, book open. I would have a really good grinding spot right now if I had a way of dealing with. which I do not. The Iron Giants is what I'm thinking of in case anybody's wondering. Hmm. My best place is probably in the trench with the Requiem. Alrighty, so. Venom, he does have a pretty substantial amount of magic evasion. So it will probably take a few tries until Venom lands. But then... You will get poisoned and won't be able to do much anymore. Well, actually, you will eventually die. Might take a while. Wait, I cannot poison. Never mind, I was wrong. Oh. Well, that's awkward. Um, what's my best attack method? Uh, probably the judge. Uh, actually, probably my best attack method is resetting. I thought he could poison him. I did I think you could poison him. You can blind him, you can ult him, you can paralyze him. Uh, I'm gonna equip whips here. Going for the highest amount of agility or how much I'll put overall. Dragon Whip is the strongest one. He might be a magic beast. In which case the bow probably would have been better, unless we miss a lot. But he can also get paralyzed. So that would mean, even though it's he's not dangerous, him getting paralyzed frequently would also mean that he's no longer attacking, which means the entire process of killing him should go a bit faster. Let's see whether he's a magic beast. I guess I could have equipped Brawl instead, because I only needed to set up once, I did not technically need to access the enemy anymore. Oh, just 
go here. And hit him until he is dead. Only like 30 attacks right now. Okay, I'm gonna clamp down the A button somehow and just stretch it for a while. So be right back. Alrighty, I'm back. So, just holding down the A button manually now, instead of it being laptop tool assisted. The laptop was just kind of sitting on the button before. The longest battle against the potato? I mean, it's a potato that is already sprouting roots, so it kind of starts evolving if you think about it. Good morning to you, Danny the Pooh. Hope you're doing well. So, this thing has 40,000 HP, so... That's just how long it takes. It would have been doable without uh, getting afloat, because we can equip an Aegis Shield, so... His instant death petrification wouldn't work against us. But he would still deal so much damage with his Earthquakes... That it would just kind of be a massive pain trying to deal with him. And we don't really have any good method of dealing much damage, which is kind of the biggest problem about it. Like, we have Sing, but that will take a while until we get ramped up with our Bard songs. Now, if only I could remember where we could buy High Potion. Where were the high potions for sale? Might have been Kelp or so. There we go. 
We're going instantly back to safe because this just took a while. Max HP base or experience, I guess. I want to get more experience than that in one battle. Okay, thank you. How much more experience would I need for a level up? 21,000. Just... Uh, not too bad. But at the same time, I'd as well just keep going for now. Because we are older than we level 60. That's really high. For my standards, anyways. Even for solo characters. I think I'm just gonna keep the whips equipped, probably. Because with whips, at least I can also... ...have shields at the same time, whereas with bows, which are strong, generally speaking, well, that just doesn't work. Once we sit in Necrophobia spot, we will want to just kind of sit there for a while, contemplate what our best options are. But until then, we still have a few chests to open. Still a little bit of hope for good abilities to come to us. Explosive the blue magic. Well, that's not it. For a small character, anyways. Uh, do I want to steal from you? I have all Genji equipment I could use, so... No. This needs to deal 7,500 damage for this guy. Kinda curious that this guy is not in the mix of random monsters, honestly. I think this should do the trick. Ooh, acting call, thank you. Thank you so much for 35 rumps of support. Welcome back to you. And well, I'm glad you enjoyed your stay. How are you doing? How's it going? Oh, also, I meant to ask you. Did you manage to figure out anything about the Game Genie and unlocking jobs early in the Japanese version by chance? It might have to be a Game Shark, I guess? I don't really know what the differences between those tools are. Either way, that's almost three years now. Thank you so much, Hacking Call. Welcome back. We found a bunch of pro action replay codes, but no luck for the game genie. I see. There might be a fundamental difference in how the thing works, I guess. I don't really know that. So I'm probably just going to run back to save if I fail to win this battle coming up. Blowfish, that's not even cool. Hollow's harp. Now that's interesting. I don't think we can equip harps, can we? Does that would potentially be really good? Maybe? Last chest here. Just money. I guess technically there's the Shinryu chest, but... I can defeat them, actually. Technically. Just takes a while. So well, let's see. Max HP in this spot. What do you have? Who are you? Oh, I did not fight all Gilgamesh yet. Oh, that's awkward. I don't know which one you are. They want to Berserk you? Maybe not. <laughs> Alright, that is Gilgamesh from the basement. So we should be able to dispose of him rather quickly. That's nice. I see. Now, let's put it this way, Actical. If you couldn't find anything, then that's just, I guess, unfortunate.
All right, we have arrived at the final war point. Let's take a look at our abilities. What do we have? Build up nugget. We kind of absolutely need item in order to survive, really, and also equip equip uh, switch equipment. How much of a way around that? Um, Puncher randomly call an Esper with no MP cost, which sounds great. Except that we don't have good espers. Um, tame, tame beast type monsters. No control, not useful. Terrain might actually be our go-to ability. As weird as that seems, terrain at at thing might be what we want to go with. Huh. I'll think about it. What else do we have? White level 2, that is just armor and probably confuse, I think. Not a whole lot useful. Dimension is slow, but we can't really slow anything. We still don't have a magic lamp, so we still need to deal with the... Ah, oh, magic casting potion at the back. Magic sword is level 3. What level 3 magic sword? Hang on. 5... Mystic. Level 3, Spellblade 2. Uh, poison, Silence, and Sleep. So we actually could use Poison in order to poison the magic casting portion because it is susceptible to poison. So that would be an option, but we can't break the armor chest portion. Aside from that, there's no use for magic sword. I'm on level 1 is not going to do anything. This has slow, but again, not that great. Uh, equip bows. We can blind the physical part, but that's kind of about it. Actually, no. The killer bow could kill the physical at uh, the magic casting push. So equip bows is a very strong consideration here. Blind the physical part, kill the magic casting portion. There's no Yes uh the Armages portion is considered to be a beast, but there is nothing that kills the Well I guess I can just break once. In order to kill the armor just at the Grand Cross portion as quick as possible. But that would technically be an option. But what else do we have? Brawl, counter, barrier. Not really. The falls, damage loss, the brawls, and dash. So, equip bows might be my best option. An 8% chance to kill that one part. But before I do that, I am going to attempt to go completely without fight and use terrain, item, and sing. This is a bit of a weird build, but I feel like this has some merit. We absolutely need an Aegis Shield to be immune against petrification. There's no way around that. And... Guardian Dagger for blocking physical attacks. A Tiara in order to be immune against confusion. Black Magic thing... Maybe I want the Mirage West instead to block mat uh, physical attacks and running shoes as I guarantee it. I think that's my loadout. So we did defeat XDEF in World 2. Which means the first phase has exactly 1 HP. But the big question will be whether I can power up my character and actually get away with it. So, the question is here, can I sing, and will his physical attack knock me out of the singing? So in his move right now, I think he mostly uses just physicals. 
So let's see. I'm currently singing the speed song, so I speed up tremendously. These physicals, from the basic uh, x def the tree form does not knock me out of singing. Let's see whether this one is different. No. Alright, we cannot use sing in the first phase. We might be able to use sing in the second phase, but the first phase is not an option, unfortunately. Ah. Alright. The nice thing about terrain is that it always casts Gale Cut in this area, which is pretty solid. I actually want the Wizard Rod for that now that I think about it. This would be so good if he actually were to hit me with a physical attack that doesn't knock me out of the thinging, but it just doesn't. We are immune to Whitehall thanks to the Aegis Shield giving us immunity petrification. Because Whitehall both petrifies and instant kills. But if you are immune either against instant kill or petrification, Whitehall is just always going to miss. We also need uh, the Aegis Shield in phase 2 because the magic casting potion can use Delta Attack, which can knock us into. Well, it would petrify guaranteed, it does never miss. So, not using an Aegis Shield in phase 2 is not an option unless we have the magic lamp, which we did not find anywhere. And unless I missed a shop somewhere, I don't think it actually is in this seat. Okay, I figured he would kill me a bit quicker than that, so let's just reset now. Okay, we cannot sing in phase 1. We probably can sing in phase 2. It's gonna be a bit... iffy, but I think we can do it. <sighs> Alright, let's do this. So, ironically, I actually want to unequip the Guardian Dagger. So, it will hit me physically more frequently. So, I can heal myself in between. Actually, I should have used the Vitality Song first. In hindsight. The magic casting portion of x Dev, I think, also has a chance to use physical attacks. It's not as frequent, but it can be a thing. So we kind of have two chances of getting knocked out of x twice. Maybe my best option is to just straight up kill him instead. Oh. Huh, I'm not sure. Beat song would be pretty crazy if we get it running, though. Beat song would also speed up our other songs. Powers by a lot. All right, do this. I should have used this before. I'm gonna unequip the Guardian Dagger. Just a Thief's Knife for slightly more speed. Let's go Speed Song. And I want him to knock me out of the thing sooner rather than later.
Yeah, I need him to not do that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. That magic part is insane. Uh. I don't have a way to give myself haste, do I? Otherwise a wall ring might be really interesting. Well, I guess I don't technically need haste if I can get that speed zone going. Okay. Crazy idea. Crazy idea. I don't technically need haste if I can get the speed zone going. So in theory, I can just start with a wall ring. So, this is what I'm gonna do. Your speed song would kind of compensate if it is maxed out, but I need to max it out first. And that's gonna be the difficulty, but since the magic part is so insanely wrong, Maybe that's just the way to go. Also, whenever the magic part uses delta attack, we have a 1 in 4 chance to potentially insta-kill uh, the armager's part. So that might be a thing. Also now, if I have reflect, I can use the... Oh, I guess maybe any seal is still better in order to deflect the armor just. Plus, we don't actually want to f block that much physical attack. I wish that transition was a little bit faster. <sighs> I didn't expect that there are certain items that can just not appear in a seat. I figured everything just can have duplicates. But that's about it. Well, maybe there is a lamp somewhere, I just don't know where it is, I guess. That's technically possible, too. Ow. I'm just gonna start singing the speed song. Arrow 3. Please block some spells like the armor chest fairies. I would really appreciate that. I feel like the wall ring is the way to go. Nice! Good job, fairies. This spell removes my region, unfortunately. That was the physical part using this spell. Grand Cross, let's see. We have effectively a... Three? No. Two, well, three and a half. Okay. Three... Two and a half in 22 chance to die, straight up die. That's such a good start. And then, what do you do? You just kill me. That's really fun. Oh, 
rude indeed. Yeah, I think once I get the speed song going, we should be good. But this might actually take quite a few tries. We just want to not see any dispels. Both the physical part and also the magic passing part can use dispel just as their regular turns. Actually, one in three chance. On the third turn of the physical part, he only has three total scripts. And a one in three chance on the second turn of the magic part to cast this spell. Hope that Delta attack would just hit the my guess part. The one in three chance for the Alta Delta attack to hit. Uh, one in three chance for him to use Delta attack that way around, and then a one in three chance, a uh, one in six chance to hit the correct part. So effectively one in eighteen. So not that great. This spell removing my image is actually quite fine right now. I would like to get physically hit sometime so I can heal up. Let's see, Grand Cross number one. We are blinded. Actually, we just have awesome sunglasses now. The interesting thing is, the fairies will now get ticks really, really quickly. Oh, maybe? No, that's the wrong part. One in three, but not one in six. I need you to hit me physically sometime soon. I need you to block the armor just. Please. Okay, block the armor just. Please hit me physically. I need to heal. <laughs> Okay. Ah, uh, this is not nearly good enough for the speed, unfortunately. I kind of hope the speed was ramped up way more than what it is right now. Uh, that's not good. Activating the other thing again. Part 4. No, it isn't really. For some reason, I thought suddenly. Isn't it susceptible to Berserk? No. Magic Bot is not susceptible to Berserk. Susceptible to poison, that's about it. Six? Nah, wrong one. Wrong one. Can I stop blocking those physicals, please? I would appreciate that. So, Ice 3 is in the second turn. Don't block the physicals. Thank you for blocking Alma just Ferris. <laughs> the blocks are real, wow. 
Actually, being minute might be to our benefit to an extent. Except that the dangers are the big spells. Okay, nothing seemed to have hit us. I don't see anything anyways. Barry, stop blocking. Seriously. That's the correct part to deal damage to, so I'm okay with this. Next is... 1 in 3 delta attack. Error 3. Unfortunately, that's the exact one that we don't want to see, really. Okay. Knocked out, but we are in pretty... A lot higher. Or better shape than before. Region again. No, you meanie. Oh. I should have actually activated my Mirage West again. Because this is gonna hurt. <laughs> Seriously? Stop! <laughs> You can't do this spell three times in a row, that just doesn't work. Like, you don't have the option to do That's so weird. Ah, we use an elixir here. Probably should have used an elixir and then used the vitality song instead. Well, to be fair, at least the... X of the thing didn't go through. Alrighty, speed song, the more it ramps up, it basically it goes exponentially quicker. No! You meanie! Maybe, maybe one in six? Yes, that's the correct one! Alright, that's instantly dead now. Okay, as long as Don't Grand Cross doesn't kill us, we should be fine, really. Going for another speed song instantly. Ouch. More speed songs. That was not a good speed song. Didn't even get one tick there. Basically, we can start that A to B at the bottom all the way to the right, pretty much, if we get full speed songs. Okay. Nothing happened to us, that's a good sign. I'm going to this. Means we get a bit more protection against physical attacks. Heal up, and then we use another speed song. In the meantime, magic part will continue casting spells, I guess. <sighs> Maybe I should just start the hero song. But no, speed song will just pay off exponentially. Eventually. Just needs to get there. Wrong part. I want you to hit the Grand Cross part. I'm going to try breaking one Judgment Staff on the Grand Cross part. On the next opportunity, which is right now. One Light Staff, excuse me, not Judgment Staff. Just to see how much damage it does. Because I want to get this part out of the way. 3680. Not as much as I hoped it would be, to be completely frank. That's my. Not in Mega. There we go. I think I'm going to go for a bit more speed song here.
wrong part. Yeah, that was the magic part actually hitting us. And I'm going to go for the hero zone now, I think. I don't think we had a good while of hero song in, so we increase our level. And then we start wailing on the Grand Cross part. Maybe we also try to get a magic song in. Hopefully Grand Cross doesn't kill us in the meantime. Looks fine. Hit the Grand Cross part. I just realized the magic pass part also has a 1 in 3 chance to attack almost every turn, except for the turn where it casts Holy or Bolt 3. Kinda curious. I'm not even going to bother with the. You know what? I'm going to go for the Genji Shield now. More physical block. I feel like I want a little bit more speed song. This is almost at critical mass right now with the speed song here. Maybe I should not have switched to Genji Shield though. Genji Shield 50% chance and then another 1 in 4 for the Guardian Dagger to block. We do have an image up as well. Might be a bit overkill. Because we might not get out of this anytime soon. <laughs> now I kind of hope for a dispel, I guess. Okay, that's fine. Please do knock me out of it. Oh shoot, I need to keep the Aegis Shield, because Grand Cross can petrify me. So I have to keep the Aegis Shield active. Please hit me, ball 3. Only 3 chance for the physical attack to hit, or physical part. Dispel, not yours. Come on, attack. Hit please. Oh, this is so awkward. There we go. Okay, I'm fine with this. Yeah, see? That's now critical. That's what I call critical mass right there. Okay. Uh, Giga Shield, please. And... Let's see the light stuff. How much damage was that? We did get a bit of hero song in. Four and a half thousand. You know, I think that is enough for me. I'm going to just go and kill the Grand Cross part now. I'll try to anyways. And I will also use Vitality Song briefly. Because I need to heal a little bit. But I did not want to waste an elixir and I felt like a high potion was not quite enough. So I hope those are going to be a few ticks in here. Main problems are gonna be, I have no idea how much damage I dealt to the physical part and how much damage I dealt to the magic part. 
So I'm just going to break two light rods, I guess, on the magic part. Because it has it starts with 10,000 HP more. And then I will just start using Wind Cutter. Actually, I will probably just pump myself up all the way with magic power. That's gonna be the first order of operation, I would guess. Magic power, hero song, all the way maxed out. Wrong part. And also maybe just kind of see whether we can get in a little bit more of the speed song as well. Laws of the physics are broken, which actually means we just pushed him into another phase, which means he's probably below 15,000 HP now. means th three more light staves should do the trick here, or maybe even less than that. That one is dead. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. Now we can switch to Genji's shield. And I'm also going to just make sure that the speed zone is indeed maxed out. Next we will be using the healer song. Normally I use just the vitality or the region ticks in order to see whether uh, the hero song goes any higher than what it is or not. But this is not going to be uh, much of an option because of the constant dispels. Also these guys might just kill each other. Actually maybe my best option is going to be just using an el elixir on each one of them. Just to make them back to full HP and also have a clear plan how much HP they have left. That might actually be my best option. Because for anybody who does not know, if you do not kill the last two remaining parts at the same time, or just generally speaking, if there's only one part remaining, uh, that means that last part will go absolute berserk and cast Meteor, Almagest, Vacuum Wave, non-stop, every turn without any delay. And that is pretty ridiculous, let's put it this way. That is something that you cannot really survive. In fact, we don't really survive a single Meteor unless we get really lucky rolls. Okay, Heat Song was indeed maxed out. Oh, Hero Song now. Hopefully no dispels in the meantime. Just so I can see the regeneration takes. Also get healed for that matter. Ah, oh, are you serious? Yeah, I need to heal. Five elixirs. I'm actually going to use those elixirs now on the enemies in north and then start keeping track, so. Bit of a crazy way of doing this, I feel like. But this way I have more control over it. I will have to heal myself with high potions instead though. Which shouldn't be too big of a problem. Ah. The 1 in 3 chance to dispel. On certain turns. I have a calculator open for both of the parts now to have individual HP tracking. They should be back at full HP after the elixir, I think. I'm actually not entirely sure whether that does that, but I hope it does. On the 57 for the regeneration tick. On 
one of them on six. Armored 74. Okay, that's gonna be back on this guy. Three zero four. Pretty sure we can go higher than that. As long as I don't make a mistake, I should have this in the bag now. 197. And the part of the bag might actually run out of MP. Actually, I don't think. Not anytime soon. 230. need power song. I will need matching song though. Well, I guess I don't technically need it really, all things considered. As long as I just kill both of the parts in approximately the same distance away from each other, it should be fine. Was I dispelled by the way? I didn't pay attention. I haven't seen a regeneration tick in a while. But then again, they don't happen that frequently, it seems like, anyways. Mainly because there's so much happening. Yes? Okay. Thank you. At least, well, the latest there would be this spell right there. I'm going to start using High Potion after this, and also activate my... This is probably the level song maxed out by now. Oh, that was actually not the physical part. I thought it was. Okay, can he hit me again sometime? I would actually kind of appreciate this right now. To be fair, as long as the it doesn't take that long that the, the thing, the magic part just kills themselves, which is highly unlikely. They have more than forty-five thousand HP left still. There we go. Okay. By the way, in case you're wondering why it sometimes reflects and doesn't deal damage, there is two dummy parts on Neo X Death, which uh, if you use randomly targeting attacks such as X Fight or, well, just reflected spells, that means it can hit the dummy parts, which basically just doesn't do anything. Which is why it was effectively a 1 in 6 chance for the Amateur's part to get hit by Delta attack rather than a 1 in 4, since there is 4 targetable parts. That was a bit too quick. 
210. This is probably maxed out for the purposes of the hero song. So we are most likely level 159 at this point. Because it adds 99 levels. Now we are in the process of adding 99 magic power to our stack. thinking it hits the physical part, but it's actually just the dummy part below it. Was it 1657 as the number over there? Did anyone pay attention? Because I'm basically trying to turn my calculation around. So I have HP remaining rather than total HP instead. One six four seven. Okay. So ten HP off. Thank you. How many flexes do I have here? I don't feel like I need to use one five yet. One to five potions left. I just keep hoping that the regeneration song sticks. Doesn't seem to do usually. But I feel like we are powered up enough. So I'm going to go ahead and break one light uh, holy stuff over the backside thing. Let's see. So we are actually almost aligned. The physical part has slightly more HP left. Let's use terrain. We will always use scale cut in this area. So that is 2765. And the other one is 2310. Sorry. 2360. Oh, and. Uh, 2660. Does the. I think the magic part actually has less magic defense, oddly enough. 2800. Yeah, the magic part just overall takes way more damage. So I kind of need to be keeping relatively close track. Hit the physical part, please. Good. Zero. We have 32,000 and 35,000 HP left, respectively, from left to right. 555 five, five, and 2415. You can see how the speed song is just insane right now. I get, despite not having haste, way more turns in than the boss. I get like three before they get one. It's insane. Good. Two six two five and five. I do actually want to get vitality, so I'm going again. I would like to be maxed out in HP. Just in case a meteor hits me, I would at least have a chance to survive. That's currently my reasoning. Two six is zero and two five two zero. I just realized I can actually increase my damage. I just realized I'm a little bit of a dummy. 
Instead of the Guardian Dagger, I can use the Wizard Rod, which increases my elemental damage by 50%, even the wind. So, we deal a little bit more damage. Actually, almost double. What is this? We are also a fair bit ahead on... We are about 5000 HP further ahead on the physical part, so I may have... We'll have to even this out one way or another. 4480 and 4410. Uh, yeah, how do I do this? Manakat, good morning! Thank you so much for 30 rums of support. Welcome back! Well, I'm glad you enjoy your stay. Thank you so much, Manakat. That's really, really kind of you. Um, how do I do this? I forgot! <laughs> oh, right. I wanted to use the Wonder Rods for stuff. Uh, this is not good. Hmm. I can just attack with the Light Rod, I guess. Not great, but... Oh no, I can't. <laughs> oh, I can't. I can't attack with the Light Rod. Because I don't have the attack command. <laughs> um, I can heal, I guess. I can use high potions. Yeah, I guess. I have to use high potions to even this out. 10 high potions. Yeah, it's pretty much precisely 10 high potions. Alternatively, I can... Oh, maybe... Let's see what this does. Seven, eight, zero, five. So... Action... Did it just die? Did it just die, guys? Uh-oh. You think it did? Yeah. That's not good. On my calculation, it still has 7,342 HP left. Alright, that means light stuff. No, no, it's still there. It's still there! I'm so confused right now. <laughs> it was a scary nose for sure. Yeah, ah. Uh, I heard that too. Let's see, terrain. Alright, uh, 4445. 3885. Okay, um. So the physical part does not survive another terrain attack. But the magic part would have survived another terrain attack, except that it literally just hit itself. You can hear me grinning. Uh, it just hit itself. For just enough damage oh, that the gale cut, it should kill it. Did it just kill it anyways? No. That should be it. Yeah, I got it. Oh. No, I reset the timer. I, I don't know what the timer was at. But we got it. Ooh. Alrighty. Solo character, Porto Fiesta, <laughs> career day, complete, in 4 minutes and 2 seconds or something like that. I'm, I'm actually going to... <laughs> I'm just gonna check the vault real quick. <laughs> Holy... That was good timing. I mean, that was good holy timing. <laughs> yes. So, it turns out using elixirs on the boss was the correct move in order to keep track of their exact HP totals. I did not expect the magic part to take so much more magic damage. It just has less defense. It has more it has 10,000 more HP, but the less defense makes a huge impact. 
That was a really fun run to watch. I'm glad you think so. No way. I'm trying to watch the broadcast again, but it opens up the weird... Hey, do you want to watch these other videos thing? That. It's just silly. Come on. Oh, I just realized I could have used an unwizard rather attack in order to finish them off. That would have worked too. Let's see, 6 hours, 48 minutes, and actually 6 hours, 49 minutes. Boom, okay. There we go. 6 hours, 49 minutes, and 6 seconds in the vodcast. Let me write that down right quick. Notepad. I hate that my Windows key doesn't work on my keyboard right now. I'm not sure why. Does anybody have an idea? I have an external keyboard plugged into my laptop, and the Windows key on that keyboard does not work. I do not know why. So 6 hours, 49 minutes, 6 seconds, and I started the run in the vault at... Come on, start already. There we go. 11 minutes and 9 seconds. That is... 09. 9. Okay. 6 hours, 49 minutes and 6 seconds minus 9 seconds. Is 6 hours, 48 minutes and... 57 seconds. 6 hours... Thirty-seven and fifty-seven seconds. That's the final time we have. Let me edit this real quick. Here we go. So our total time in order to accomplish this: was six hours, thirty-seven minutes, fifty-seven seconds. From start to finish. I don't know what I was expecting, how long this would take to be completely honest. It is now 1.33am and I just really felt like doing this. It's actually kind of a relief in a sense because the last few days I just really didn't feel like doing anything. Like nothing at all. Not even streaming, just sitting there. But I figured, you know, I just really feel like doing this. So... It was relatively late already, and I figured it's gonna take probably a bit longer than my first seat, which was four and a half hours. Especially after I saw Thief, uh oh, Mimic, uh oh, and then Geomancer and Beastmaster's like, oh my. But thankfully, Equipped Bows helped us out greatly, and also Sing did end up coming in very handy. Hmm. Needed more onions. Don't have onion night on Saturday. Career day is so fun. It's a good compliment to the Four Chop Fiesta. Honestly, I really like the concept of the first four jobs you find, just stick with them in the career day here as well. Because otherwise, what I've noticed in career day. You tend to just kind of go for the same things over and over again. You sing with the bards in order to make yourself a power taste with a time mage and then you x-fight everything to death. Or even just dual wield attack with a ninja or so. And it kind of boils down to the same thing over and over again I feel like. So I like the idea of just what of Fiesta styling it. The solo cact is probably a little bit exaggerated but what of Fiesta seems fine. 
one of the things we are looking at is maybe an enforced Forge of Fiesta mode for the career day. I mean, it could be kind of like a flag, I guess. One job at each crystal, enforce the job in the menu, etc. Hmm. I mean, it could actually be a bit more of a interesting system to extent where you know where you can get the jobs. You know, kind of like... It could be a little bit like the fan Fancy 4 Free Enterprise where you can exchange characters. The characters basically have their jobs just kind of built in. What if you can have only a maximum of 4 jobs, but you can exchange them if you find a new one or something like that. Giltos is popular too. Giltos is so insanely powerful in the early game to just get you started. It's crazy. The far late game, it's not that crazy anymore unless you have a bard or a chemist. Still decent though. Mm, I don't know. Overall, I really, really like career today. Casually. I wouldn't want to do anything competitively if you. At least not yet. Maybe a casual race, but that's about it. Nothing's here. For me, it's just the thing is, it's too random in the sense that I'm kind of missing that overarching idea of working towards, let's say, unlocking a tablet rather than just randomly getting lucky to go to the correct boss where there happens to be a tablet. Maybe another thought is actually that a lot of places have exactly one way on how you get in there. You either already have access to it, or you need to exactly that one item in order to get there. I would kind of appreciate if that kind of would... I, that's just kind of my thought. I don't know whether that's any good idea, just shooting around ideas. Basically, again, coming back to the... Con comparison of Zelda Link to the Past, you can get to various places through different means. You can get up to Tower of Hera either through the mirror or you, the hookshot and the hammer. You can get into Desert Palace by having the flute, titan smiths and the mirror or just the book. And there's kind of a lot of places where you can get to those places in multiple ways. And that's kind of a little bit what I'm missing here too, maybe. Not sure. Either way... It's an excellent start. I just hope it gets developed in a direction I'm going to be interested in. And at least if I'm not interested in it, I hope it will be a lot of people that enjoy it. Because it doesn't have to cater to me. I see. Glad to hear that, Karelius, and thank you so much. If you get killed in chemistry early, it is this game over. I guess so. Uh, thing is, I don't like using a chemist. Partially because I don't know the formulas inherently. Aside from like Dragon Power, I know Potion Plus. Dragon Fang, but that's about it. And I also don't really know a lot of other useful mixes. Partially because I don't use it often, but I also kind of don't like using Chemist, at least not in Forge of Fiesta settings, because it's just so powerful, it's overwhelming, and everything rotates around the use of a Chemist once you have one. At least if you're trying to be efficient. If you just want to Play it casually and use certain mixes, fine too. But for me, it's like if I have options, it's kind of weird not to use them unless I do a specific type of challenge run. You have the formulas memorized, nice. 
How do you make fire, ice, and lightning absorb, if I may ask? Mm, also, make sure to not rearrange items in your inventory after you have stuff mixed on your character, because that's really good. I believe ice absorb was Phoenix Down and was it I draw? <laughs> Either way, ice ah, fine. The thing is, I like to use those obscure formulas that just have very niche use. But these niche situations, they are just fantastic. But by the way, I have a question. Is there a guarantee for certain items to be in the seat or not at all? Like, for example, I'm pretty sure there's no magic lamp in my seat. But there's a few spots I haven't checked, like the Shinryu chest and stuff like that. I also haven't been in the Twin Towers. I'm very pro math in fantasy tactics. Nice. I don't really know how that works, because I've never played it. The only forced items are some recovery stuff in stores. I see. Speaking of stores, one thing I would personally like to see is stores being themed. It's already partially like that with uh, jobs and abilities being in specific stores, it seems like. But just kind of recovery items and uh, equipment, weapons, etc. It feels like it's a huge mess. At the very least, I would like to see the mess being arranged by, like, a system, like consumable item, utility item, then weapon, shield, headgear, armor, accessory, I guess. Because right now it's just boom, list. And it would be easier to, for me to skim through it if I saw a pattern in it. Like, if I see, okay, it starts with uh, headgear items, which means there's no weapon or shields in the store or something like that. That would kind of be already nice for me. I have yet to explore the idea of a cursed shield, by the way. It's kind of... Interesting. Is there a list of items that are in the randomizer that are not in the base game? Because I saw a Gungnir spear and I had no idea what it is. Gungnir spear has 54 attack. Um, that's not even particularly good. Wait, have I just never used the Gungnir Spear and that's it? This is like a dummy. You pull from the raw list, so everything that is in the algorithm sky should also be around. Fair enough. Maybe I just don't remember where it is, I guess. I know the Wind Spear. Oh, the Double Lance is a spear. I button, that's pretty I mean, it might be. I don't remember the javelin either, but who knows. I'm pretty sure the partisan is the next weapon that you normally find in Exter's castle in World 2. Hey, Eki Tronkowski. You actually have come in just at the end. It is 1.45am currently for me. So, a bit later than I would probably usually stream currently. Javelin is a mid-level spear stolen from sand bears. 
All right. I knew Sand Bears had the spear to steal, but I didn't realize it was unique. It couldn't be bought. Interesting. Also, the Wind Spear you can steal as a rare steal from Chimera Brain, but might as well just get it a little bit later. Spear is a bad spear if one of the rods in the speedrun would do dragon fangs from steam from Kira Brain. Wind spear is the rare still, if you got that, made things awkward. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, that would happen. So, for example, I don't remember the Forge Sword, or Bison Sword, or Murazama, Murazame, or of the Samurai Sword variety. But then again, I haven't really played Samurai yet, at least on Solo Character Challenge, so I might just, I don't know them. But I feel like there's the Katana, and then there's a huge gap, and then you get the Wind Blade, and then you get the Muramaza on the end. That's kind of my mental list of samurai blades that is in the game. Bison is definitely vanilla, I see. 51 attack. That's less than the Kotet sword, which I have no idea where that might be. Durgate mm -hmm. sounds about right, actually. Again, I've have barely ever used Samurai. I'm currently looking through my spoiler log and... When I search for Magic Lamp... I see... Top of the Falls Magic Lamp, but not an actual Magic Lamp, so there was actually no Magic Lamp in my seat. Wow. Considering I had like three separate Magic Lamps in the previous seats I've played... I'm really kind of relied on getting one. But thankfully... Sing came just in the nick of time to bail us out. Because without Sing, this would have been a lot more awkward to do. Because I feel like I kind of almost had to use a wall ring. That magic card was doing ridiculous damage. The thing about this game, there's really not that many chests. It's true. And I was trying to think about, okay, where's the biggest cluster of chests? I couldn't really think of much of anything. Literally where you start at Tycoon Castle is the most chests. There is one, two, three, four, plus the NPC on the left side, one in the pot on the left side, then a few on the top right tower, and then 
little bit more on the right side in the castle, and then two chests on the right side through the wall. That's kind of the biggest cluster of chests there is. 34 HP, that's OP. Maybe. That's true, actually. Pyramid. I guess the pyramid doesn't have any key items. But it has a lot of items. The problem about the pyramid is, and that is a pretty... If I were to try and go fast, I would never enter the pyramid. Because... Even if there were crazy good items in there, the fact that there's so many monsters in the chests is just a big no-go. Casually, not halfway casually like this just now. Why not? I kind of hope for something useful. Didn't happen, but oh well. So omniscient at the pyramid page. But where was that? Where was omniscient? Wait, I had the pyramid page already? Whoa, hold on. Apparently, according to my spoiler log, omniscient had the pyramid page. I probably just didn't click it. I well, actually did have access to the pyramid the entire time. Oops. Pyramid has a full the pyramid. It's really mostly... Even if you have Requiem, as you could see, which demolishes on that. It's just kind of a lot of time invested to check individual chests. Although my favorite thing so far is that I figured out, oh, I can sell elixirs. Oh, I can still farm them at the Titans. Or the Gigas enemies in Karnak Escape. So that made it interesting. Just grabbed a bunch and those ended up being quite helpful, even if I didn't sell them. Yeah, that makes sense in the sense. Alright, and we have arrived at the end. One quick question, Kirillis. In the config option, there is that RWD thing that has 1, 2, or 4 in it. What is that config option? Because I think it's the experience multiplier, but I don't actually know. Also, why is it that uh, battle speed by default is on 1? <laughs> it is? Experience and ability point multiply. Okay. Good to know. Because right now, for me, it must just make sense to set that to 4 every time because it's supposed to be casual fun rather than any particularly big challenge. Either way, if I'm doing any more career day, I will probably just do Forge of Fiesta. Probably not solo character. But I might actually limit it to two or probably three characters rather than four. Because I always felt like having four characters is a little bit too cumbersome. Three seems to be just kind of the nice middle ground between two being too few, because you need to do many tasks, and four being too much to manage and also the experience splits too many times. Either way, that was it for me for today, also tonight, and yesterday and something like that. I hope you enjoyed your stay, I hope you enjoyed watching, and oh, well, thank you very much everybody. And hopefully until next time, take care, and thank you very much. <laughs>